Imagine surviving 100 days in the Wild West. The Industrial Revolution has just begun, giving the Cowboys access to machines, working trains, and guns. Lots and lots and lots of guns. The world will also be set to Badlands only and locked to hardcore. Will I be able to survive 100 days? Keep watching to find out. Here we are inside the Wild West. I'm already in character, as you can see by this lovely cowboy hat. That's definitely a village over there, so let's go to that. We'll also punch some dead bushes on the way to get some sticks. Hopefully this village has crops, because it is going to be pretty difficult to get food here. The only biome in this world is the Mesa. Alright, we have arrived. There's a bunch of bookshelves in here, so I'm going to get to stealing those. My goals for this video are to build an awesome Wild West town, get equipped with some incredibly strong weapons, and take on some super difficult raids. The raids in this mod pack are incredibly overtuned, so we're going to have to have some serious power in order to fight them. Oh, there's a chest in here. And we've got some food. Nice. There's also a hat, the cracked crown, but we've got a cowboy hat. We do not need any other hat. Hello, Lawrence. You mind if I... You don't have anything to steal. Actually, I will take your bed. Thanks. Bye, Lawrence. We're going to steal some more bookshelves from this building. I've already become a menace to public libraries. Who else has got stuff for us to steal? There's more bookshelves, but I don't want those. There's a green bed in here. I'll swap that out for our brown one. And the chest has a few things. I've just realized the floor is made of planks. Let's grab some wood. Not every Minecraft world starts the same. 99% of the time you punch trees to get wood. Instead, I'm punching someone's floor to get wood. Now we can make ourselves a crafting table and then a wooden axe. This thing is so bad. I really hope this village has a stable because one of the key parts of the Wild West is being a cowboy and riding on a horse. That is all the floor in the house successfully yoinked. So let's get out of here before the cops show up. These guys really love to read. There's bookshelves in every house and a chest. Ooh, ooh, well, that's not bad, you know? There's a brewing stand in here, but we can't really use that. There's a chest at the top, though. Quite a lot of food in here, which I'm very happy about. Some gold as well. And we don't really need any of the other stuff. I do see a pillager outpost over there. It looks really weirdly generated, though. I have no idea what happened. Please be something good in this chest. Yes, we got iron. Nice. I will happily take an iron helmet. Yes, please. We are wearing the helmet. It just won't show up because we're wearing this cowboy hat on top. We'll skip stone tools and move straight to iron. And using this iron pickaxe, we'll also yoink this blast furnace. Leandro sleeping with his eyes open. Hopefully he doesn't notice me steal everything from his chest. Except he's got nothing of value. He's got dead bushes in his chest. I'm stealing from a peasant. There is a furnace though. I will take that. And a red bed. You can't go wrong with a red bed. I could murder you for your iron. And you know what? That's exactly what I'm going to do. Yes, I've built up four blocks instead of three because I'm scared. Listen, mate, I'm sorry. It's nothing personal. Well, I guess it is kind of personal because you're made of iron. And I need that iron. What's up, Missy? Uh, oh, you have a sapling. Thank you very much. That's been yoinked. I'll replace it with a cactus. You're welcome. That's nowhere near as valuable out here where saplings are so much rarer than cacti, but it's fine. I'm sure she won't even notice. There's some meat on this rack, which we'll take. The villagers must be so happy that I showed up to steal all of their stuff. Oh, no, no, no. Zombie siege. Of all the nights for this to start, why the first? The villagers would probably have a better fighting chance if I hadn't just murdered the iron golem. Get back. Get back, I say. Get back. Oh, get away. I did rob these people of everything valuable they own, so it's probably best if I clear out the zombies. That's the least I can do. Zombie spotted. This darn town ain't big enough for the two of us. That's the worst cowboy accent ever. Robbery, murder, and illegal entry on the first night. We are off to a brilliant start, guys. I would say I'm sorry. I'm really not. You're incredibly useful and you need to die. Thank you. You saw nothing, Raffaella. That's what you're going to tell the police. Or the sheriff, I guess. That's what they had in the Wild West. Let's just keep moving. There's no point building a base on the second day. I guess we could loot the pillager outpost, but there's just nothing good there. And also, why have you tracked me all the way up the mountain? I am going to take my leave. These guys are clearly very persistent. Go away. Let me grab this. Oh, take it all. Take it all. It's just not that serious, mate. What is wrong with you? I don't really want to go in an abandoned mineshaft just yet. We really don't have the armor all the equipment to deal with what spawns inside. Though having said that, I will destroy this zombie. Yeah, see, this is what I mean. Two skeletons. No, thank you. Oh, there is a minecart chest there, though. I'm taking that. Gimme, 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 gimme. It's terrible. We've got an electric paddle, which is actually a trinket. And apparently, the ship goes X faster. I think this might be an unfinished item. I'll take these seeds. These are going to be really useful for starting our farm. I guess we'll equip the electric paddle, even though I don't think it does anything. Maybe it makes our 
our boat go faster and it's a mistranslation or something. We've got some kangaroos here. Hopefully they don't want to square up because I'd rather not have a boxing match. And there's a rattlesnake. No, thank you. I've come across those before in modded Minecraft. I am not trying to get hit with poison three. We've got some uh, emus, I think think maybe i'm gonna get roasted in the comments if i'm wrong there's a little bit of gold ore in this well that's okay i guess we've also got this uncommon hat grab bag and this common hat grab bag but once again we don't need what's in these we've got our cowboy hat there's got to be a cool structure around here somewhere right this looks sick but it's not adding any money to my bank account useless now that i think about it i should probably make a water bucket all right there we go and we'll also get equipped with a stone axe i'll grab this sugar cane yes please we've got a few tomato bushes here the question is are you a tomato lover or a tomato hater everyone that i've met always is either one or the other i personally love tomatoes but i feel like i'm gonna be in the minority here why am i asking you guys if you like tomatoes or not what is wrong with me i spy with my little eye something beginning with v it's village obviously oh that's a skirt and Corner. If you guys could just murder each other, that would be really useful. Skirtons are so dumb. I love them. Ow. Quick, put the torches in. He's got an enchanted bow. Nice. He's dead. What have we got in here? Um, sand. Hooray. And in this just enchanted book. No. We have got a lead though. That could be useful. This village is rich. They've got their houses dripped out with dark oak beams. Although they have bushes growing in their houses. Please have a horse. No. There is a blacksmith though. That is a welcome sight. We've got ourselves an iron chest plate and some more saplings. Great. Why bother mining for iron armor when you can just steal it? And why bother gathering food when you can also just steal it? Look how much dark oak wood these guys used. We are definitely going to have to come back here and steal this. Also, hello, Rattlesnake. Please chill. There's another blacksmith. Please have diamonds. Okay, no diamonds, but loads more saplings and iron leggings. There's a couple pigs here, but no horse. Oh, I see some more stuff down there. Oh, wait, no, this is not a friendly area. Watch there be a Vindicator in here who just one-shots me. Hello? Oh, what am I getting hit by? Oh, a cactus. There is a chest and nothing we need. I'm so confused. I don't hear any enemies in here. No one's going to stop me from taking this stuff. Okay. There's a goat horn in here, but nothing else really. There is a crossbow though. I'll take that. There's a silk touch book in here. Yes, please. And we've got some arrows for our new crossbow. Oh, look, there's a trap delay in here. Let's free him. Get out of here, my man. You're free. I'm really surprised this place wasn't full of pillagers, but I'm not complaining. There's a gapple in here too. I nearly missed this. A crossbow is nice, but I would very much like to upgrade to a gun. I'm going to become the finest sheriff in all these lands. I'm, you know, I'm not going to torture you with this terrible accent any longer. I would really, 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 really like a horse right now too. Surely there's some kind of bandit camp out here that's stacked full of loot. Got enough food to last us for now, but we'll definitely need to settle down sooner rather than later or we'll suddenly realize that we've eaten it all. Surely there's something out here. I'm all lonely. There's no one to stab. Quick update. There is someone to stab. Oh my, what is that? Well, uh, we've certainly found a moderately sized structure. It's, it's all right, not too big. <laughs> Let's go to bed real quick. I can tell there's a bunch of enemies in here because my frame rate is absolutely tanking. In order to stop the game from lagging while we're here, I have turned the render distance down quite a lot. I do recognize this structure and these towers are always teeming with pillagers. All the good loot is right at the top, which is why we're going to cheese it. The chests inside the towers themselves only ever have iron and gold, not worth dying for. But the chests at the top, ladies and gentlemen, that is where the good stuff is. We will make ourselves an iron shovel. And we are going to need a lot of sand in order to reach the top. Probably two or three stacks. When we have good armor and guns, we'll go through and absolutely sweep this place. But right now, cheating is the only way. We have not reached max cowboy power yet. But don't worry, we certainly will by the end of this video. See, look at that. That's a skeleton with an enchanted bow with enchanted armor. How do we have any chance of fighting that? I'm also going to collect some terracotta so that we can bridge from tower to tower. Because unlike some Bed Wars players, I cannot bridge with sand. All right, three stacks of red sand and a stack of orange terracotta. We are ready. Oh, there's an egg here. You don't mind if I just yoink this, do you? Can you throw this like chicken eggs? Oh, you can. Anyway, random distractions aside, let's get to pillaring up. We are right next to a lake, so if we get knocked off, we should be able to dive into there. Shout out to whoever designed this, by the way. This is an insane structure. I feel like this is life coming full circle, because I actually put this structure in the thumbnail of my better Minecraft video, but I never actually went there, so now finally I'm experiencing it. There's a chest there. I want that. It's not at the highest point, so I don't think it'll be that good. Okay, loads of iron. Never mind. And a sharp two iron sword. Can't 
go wrong. We're almost there now. Please don't let a skeleton spawn and shoot us off or something. It took almost all of our sand, but here we are at the top. Plenty of iron in here, some enchanted iron leggings, and an enchanted bow. And look at this. Double chest, double chest, double chest, double chest. Yes, please. Diamond armor already. That is what I'm talking about. Goodbye, enchanted iron leggings. You've already been replaced. This structure is so OP. I love it. Leather boots. How about diamond boots? There is a map here. No idea what that could show us, but we'll take it. Next chest. Loads of iron. That is a dream. Next chest. Oh, there's just so much stuff. Why is there blaze powder in here? Who decided that was a good idea? Thank you. Next chest. Diamond chest plate. Diamond chest plate. Thank you. We've just gone from iron and leather to full diamond. Full diamond armor. And there's a god apple because why wouldn't there be? Why wouldn't there be a god apple along with full diamond armor? And there's a saddle and there's horse armor. I can hear pillagers down here. Yep, there he is. No thank you. He's got a firework in his crossbow. See, this is what I mean. This structure is super dangerous unless you just pillar up and cheese it all. More gold in here. Thanks very much. We might as well make ourselves some more gapples. And there's loads of fermented spider eyes so I'll grab those. There's more chests on that tower. This is ridiculous. There is a skeleton there, though, so he's got to go. Die, you are not sniping us off when our loot is this good. There's a spawner down there. No thanks. There's so much iron and gold. More diamond armor, more iron, more gold. We're going to have to start crafting iron blocks in order to carry it all. Diamonds in here, another gapple. Ow, oh, cursor vanishing. Yuck. More diamond boots, another gapple, efficiency two. Eh, I don't need that. Six more diamonds, blaze powder, obsidian. We have hit the jackpot. Look Look at that. Jewel wielding enchanted diamond swords. Do you see why I don't want to go in this place? Get back. Back off. Get away. This place is horrendously unbalanced and I love it. I have actually run out of blocks to bridge with, so we're going to need to yoink some of this wool. Why are you there? Also, I apologize for any frame rate drops. There's so many custom mobs being spawned here that it does tend to tank the game's performance. With a render distance of 6 and a 3080 Ti on my PC, I'm just barely managing to get 60 FPS. More loot over here. Yes, please. Power 3, Unbreaking 3 Flame. Don't mind if I do. A second God Apple, because why not? Prot 3, Unbreaking 3 Leggings. Another Power 3 Bow. I'm actually not going to bother taking this because soon the bow will become completely obsolete due to getting guns. All the iron we've got is really useful because we're going to be crafting a lot of ammo. I've just realized I've been getting ender pearls from the chest. Why not just use those? We've got some feather falling three boots in here. Thank you very much. I guess we could do a little bit of fighting inside. It would be a shame not to. Goodbye. See, look, this place is so unbalanced. Inside the actual buildings where all the enemies are, this is the loot. Oh, enchanted bow guy. Leave me alone. Get out of here. Die. Oh, we got a music disc. Oh, diamond sword. He does so much damage. Relax. He's so fast. We managed to evade him, but that could have been really bad. Even with the diamond armor, he does a ridiculous amount of damage. We can just bow spam him. That works. Yep, that's enough fighting inside there for me. Thank you very much, but no thank you. I'll stick to robbing these guys. Why is this loot free? This is stupid. All of this is at the top, free of any enemies. Prot 3, I'm breaking 3 chest plate. Thanks. And another pair of Feather Falling 3 boots. We can get Feather Falling 4. We've pretty much ransacked every major tower here, so it's time to leave. Goodbye. We have gone from peasant cowboy to dripped out rich as anything cowboy. Ooh, golden apple in here. Thank you. There's not really any loot for us in mine shafts, but now we can just charge straight in with no fear of cave spiders. There is so much gold here. What? Why is there all of this just chilling here? I was going to be exploring for a few more days, but I think the best thing for us to do now is to find a good spot to make a base. There's an open air mine shaft here, which is pretty pointless in terms of mining anything, but there's loads of chests out in the open. What have you got for us, Chest? Some lapis? I'll take that. Thank you. I see cobwebs here, but it looks like the cave spider spawner was overwritten by this hole. Oh no, what a shame, everyone said. I'm mainly looking for a super open flat area. This place isn't too bad, but I want to keep looking. It feels just a little bit penned in with these giant hills on this side and these eroded cliffs on the other side. Another chest in the open. Thank you very much. My problem is that I'm very indecisive when it comes to making a base. The area has to be perfect. There is a ruined portal here, so let's loot that. And it has another gapple. Ow. Why is there a horde forming around me? Come on, zombie. Get the skeleton. Look, I'll hit you 
you towards him. I'll punch boost you. No! You killed my zombie friend. And I'm going to kill you as well, because why not? Oh, hold on. This place is promising. And you got this really awesome eroded peak here. That looks amazing. I think this is where the base is going to go. Slight problem. I forgot to bring any wood to make chests, so we're going to have to go ransack this mineshaft. I keep saying base. It's going to be a giant western town. And of course, the idea is that we'll be defending it from raids. Another chest. Backstabbing too. I don't know what that does, but I can kind of guess what it does. I'm not that dumb. We actually need to go mining for dirt. I know that sounds really random. Why would you mine for dirt? But it's because you can actually find it underground, and that's the only place you can get it in the Badlands. It's also really confusing because on Java, this place is called the Badlands, and on Bedrock, it's called the Mesa, so I just kind of use the two interchangeably. Talking of Minecraft Bedrock, I had the god set up yesterday. I was in the car on the way to my nans, and I hooked up my Xbox controller to my phone with Bluetooth and played Minecraft on there. It's not particularly impressive, but I felt like Einstein in the moment. Also, this kind of goes without saying, but I was not the one driving, obviously. <laughs> Can you imagine causing a 10-car pileup because you were too busy mining diamonds? I definitely want to use a lot of dark oak wood in our town, and these mine shafts are not going to cut it. We are going to need to ransack some of those villages. You know what else we'll be setting up? Trains. I have the create mod installed. I've never used it before, so I'm going to be terrible at it, but you can actually make trains. Because minecarts are fine, but this is the Wild West. We are not going to be traveling around in an iron bucket. We're going to need to get some serious shoveling done because this land is very uneven. Can you imagine trying to build a saloon in this hole? Not happening. Let's make ourselves a double chest to dump everything inside. Then we'll grab some sticks from these bushes and we will make a diamond shovel. We might as well make a diamond sword and a pickaxe as well. And we have all the resources. Let's make an enchanting table. We might as well just chuck some level one enchantments on these. We can always grindstone them off later. I will take fire aspect one on the sword. Yes, please. We'll get started filling in some holes on this land and then we'll build our first house. I've never done this before and this might shock some people, but in our wild west town, I want our villagers to roam free. That's right. I'm not going to coop them up in a cobblestone box. They will have enjoyable lives. Semi enjoyable, actually. I'm still going to scam them, but they'll be able to walk around. That's an improvement. Oh no, I must have accidentally left behind all of our torches in those bandit towers. <laughs> Future Mosey here. This is not one of my proudest moments. Let's go to bed then. I'm not going to get blown up by a creeper. No thanks. Due to the lack of torches, there has been a change of plans. We are going to go on a mining trip. We need lots of coal and lots of dirt because we got to set up a tree farm. This is a very nice start. There's a regular chest there, not even a minecart one. Oh, it's because it's a spawner. This is right next to where our base is going to go. We could definitely make an XP grinder out of this. We found a moonstone trinket as well, which gives us minus 87.5% gravity. That is so weird. We can fly, basically. Well, we can't really fly because we're just jumping, but that's kind of cool. It would probably get quite annoying, though, so I'm going to unequip it for now. We've got another name tag and a backup saddle in here, too. There's also some dirt on the wall. That's what we need. It feels really weird that dirt is actually quite valuable. Oh, and we're going to need some for crops as well. I didn't even think of that. Never in my life have I been so happy to collect dirt. Get out of here, child. Move. No, he set me on fire. There's another spawner here. No way can we make a double zombie spawner. What is our luck right now? The loot is rubbish, but that's not even important. Max enchantments, here we come. Unrelated, but there are also some really cool machines you can make with the create mod. I'm going to try my best with it, but don't get mad at me in the comments because I'm going to screw it up. At least I haven't forgotten to get saddles this time. In multiple videos, I've said I wanted a saddle and then completely passed by one when I see it in a chest because I didn't realize. We're actually going to need even more dirt than I thought because I want to put a dirt road going through the middle of our town. A dirt road is actually expensive to make. That is really weird to think about. We also need light gray concrete in order to make a weapons workbench, so we're going to need to grab any gravel that we see. I've just realized that I started this mine on top of a giant hill. That wasn't my smartest idea. Give me the dirt. I need all the dirt. The world's dirt supply shall be mine. If anyone's played Terraria, you know the merchant in that game? He says you have no idea how much dirt blocks sell for overseas. He was talking about this world. Also, let me know if you'd like to see Terraria 100 days. If there's enough demand for it, I will make it. We've gone through about half of our diamond shovel's durability. It's holding up well. I just know that if I don't go all out collecting dirt now, I will keep running out and have to go back into the mines to get more. There's also plenty of coal, which is nice because logs are way too valuable to be burning for charcoal. What is this ore? I've never seen this before. It is raw zinc. That's probably for the create mod. Since I'm a genius, I did not record the coordinates 
coordinates of our base, nor do I know where the staircase up is, so we're gonna have to hope that when we emerge from the caves, we don't get lost. I was just about to say I hadn't found any gravel yet, but here we are. That is a big drop. Oh well. Ooh! I landed that. I thought that even if I whiffed the water bucket, I'd survive with the feather falling, but that actually could have been really bad. I kind of regret jumping in here because deep slate mining is so boring. It just takes so long to mine. Yeah, no thanks. I'm going to go find an open cave. I jumped from all the way up there. What was I thinking? Oh, hold on. There's a cave. That is very convenient. There's some lapis here. That is nice. We'll need that for enchanting. Not going to lie, we're starting to run out of inventory space, but the dirt collecting must continue. As I'm caving, I've also just had a thought. Has anyone ever found a fossil in regular survival Minecraft? They're so rare, I've never come across one in all my time of playing. I really wish I brought shears, because glow lichen is a really cool decoration for builds. And also, I'm getting attacked by a family of creepers. Go on then, blow your wife up. Ooh! That is a lot of mobs. Hello. The normal thing to do when someone visits you is say hello, not shoot them in the face with a bow and arrow. If I knew how, I would absolutely make a data pack that would put cowboy hats on all the mobs. That would be amazing. Not that we need them, but we haven't found any diamonds yet, which is kind of weird. There's another double spawner. What is this? What is happening right now? This is actually weird. Why is there a perfect double spawner? That should not be a thing. What? And a feather falling four book and a gapple. This one world is so lucky it's making me feel like the worst luck is about to happen i'm not gonna lie we've got lots of dirt and plenty of gravel so let's get out of here let's just mine up and away through the wall oh and we found some more lapis that's nice it feels nice to be able to mine this again after the nether video not having access to enchantments in that was pure pain oh i've mined straight back up into the caves oh we've actually found some diamonds though let's get our moonstone equipped because that seems like fun Nah, this is so sick we could just bunny hop around ah don't shoot me that's that's not part of the plan. I can fly, skeletons. I can fly. This is so dumb. And of course, the diamond was a one vein. I will say the moon gravity is kind of weird for jumping up staircases, so I'm gonna unequip this thing. I do want to explore around the Wild West on horseback, so the moonstone is not gonna get used that much. It does kind of break the game. Oh, hold on. Imagine if the moonstone powers work while we're on a horse. Now that would be sick. I don't think it will, but it's a possibility. We've also hit the terracotta layer now, so we should be close-ish to the surface. There it is. Daylight. Wait, no way. We've actually just popped up right next to our base. That's perfect. I also didn't realize you can see the bandit towers in the distance. That's kind of cool. This is by no means permanent, but let's set up a little tree farm up here. This should keep us nice and supplied for now. Let's collect a bunch of sticks and start making some torches to light this area up with. We would not want any creepers spawning in the middle of the night and destroying what we've made. That would suck. Oh my days, that emu is fighting a skeleton. What? Get him. Get him. Get him. Nice. Oh, they're just going at it. Hold on. Is our town going to be defended by emus? That is amazing. Get out of here. Leave the emus alone. Or actually don't, because it's really helpful when you fight them instead of me. Oh, now that's interesting. A zombie villager, because we could very well cure you. Just need to get some wood to make a boat. Boom. Boat acquired. That's the slowest crafting ever. Get in. Thank you. Yeah, not you, mate. No one wants you. Now we'll just build a little shelter around this guy to protect him from the sun. We've already got blaze powder from the bandit towers, and I'm sure we can find a brewing stand in that village. We can probably cure this guy pretty soon. The economy's good. We're rich in iron, gold, and diamonds. This is a good playthrough. Remember, Simba, everything the torches touch is our kingdom. Did I accidentally turn on the setting that spawns an army of mobs every single night? What is happening? No, 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 no. This is dumb. This is dumb. There should not be this many... Oh, not my new land. Please stop blowing it up. I'm taking more damage than I would like. Why did that arrow just reflect off my forehead? I do not know. I'm just going to show you that in slow motion again. If anyone knows what happened here, please let me know. Okay, that's that dealt with. I'm so confused on what brought that on. Why did they decide to start a siege? I know why. They want our riches. We've actually managed to claim a pretty sizable area. This is great. I'm going to keep shoveling sand and filling in the holes on our property. No, don't add to the holes on my property. Oh, it's pretty annoying how there's terracotta underneath the sand because it means we'll have to mine that and replace that with sand as well. But that's a problem for later. It's all fun and games saying that's a problem for later until later comes and then it is a problem. I could fill in this sinkhole, but that's way too much effort. We're only going to do these small ones. Once we've got the land ready, we can start making plans for where each building in our town will go. We've got this cool island here. I think we should remove the land connecting it and build a bridge over instead. There we are. The island has been successful 
successfully disconnected. I definitely want this to be the town square, which is kind of annoying because that's where I've just built this giant cobblestone shed for our villager. I'm going to use some of our super valuable dirt to actually mark out where everything's going to go. And this is why you do things in dirt, because I've already decided I want to move this part. So this circular thing that I'm building right now is actually going to be where the city's well is going to go. I'm changing its placement again. I can't make up my mind. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that placement. And then all around this, we can place a bunch of different caravans and trading stalls and that kind of thing. And then back here, this could be where the bank goes. I think it would look pretty good tucked in between these little hills. And then I think here facing the water would be where the saloon would go. Every wild west town has to have a saloon. And then over here could be the armory where we're going to craft and store our weapons. And then over here on this flat area would be a good place to put the ranch with a bunch of crops and horses and any other animals. We could also potentially have some small villager houses up here. We are going to cram about four or five villagers in each of them because we don't have space. But still, they're going to live much better lives than the ones in my other hardcore playthroughs. I am going to have to cover up this water hole at some point, aren't I? And then finally up here with this hole filled in, this is where the sheriff's quarters will go. That's obviously where we're going to live. Okay, that planning's all well and good, but I want to acquire a weapon. Now, as I said earlier, we need light gray concrete in order to make a gun workbench, which means we need light gray dye. I'm sorry, Mr. Squid. Your death will serve the greater good. I've just realized this river's full of dirt. Why did I not think of this beforehand? Does anyone remember when there was no black dye? The ink sacks were black dye. Anyway, we make some white dye. We combine our white dye with the black to make light gray, and then we make some light gray concrete. That's not how you do it. I think we need regular sand for this, not the red stuff. There we go, light gray concrete powder. Then we make three pieces of light gray concrete, and then using that and five pieces of iron, we can make the workbench. And there are a whole lot of weapons we can make. And using 20 iron ingots and three planks, we can craft the LM spear iron port. Look at that. Now, just a warning that these weapons are made up and are not historically accurate. I mean, I feel like it's made pretty obvious when this thing shows up in the weapons workbench. We can't actually use this gun yet because we need heavy bullets and those require copper copper actually has a purpose now. Anyway, we've crafted our first gun. That's the main thing. Our trees have grown, so let's go ahead and collect some wood. Some of the guns in this mod pack are hilariously overpowered, so we are definitely going to be working our way towards those. We can even make a flamethrower. Is that completely inaccurate to the current time period? Yes but do I absolutely want one and will acquire one at all costs? Also, yes. Let's go ahead and start collecting resources to build our town. You, sir, will not be a resident. I should probably have made a boat, shouldn't I? You know what? I'm going to do that. The question is, because of this electric paddle, does it go any faster than normal? Oh, oh what? What is this? No, 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 no. What is going on? I thought it was a bugged item. What is this? I'm straight zooming. Tokyo Drift. What's going on? I apologize to whoever designed the trinkets mod. I will never doubt you ever again. Wow, it is going to be hard to ride on horseback after this. I am flying across the water. The horse we get is going to have to be for decoration only. There's no way we're neglecting the boat travel. Ooh, that's a rattlesnake. You stay there and relax. I'm going to be over here doing my thing. Anyway, the reason I've come to these bandit towers is to mine at this giant hunk of brick at the bottom. Now, while West Towns were mostly made of wood, but they did incorporate some brick, which which is why I've decided to collect some. There's also plenty of colored wool here, which we can use in our trading caravans and wagons. All right, we've got a couple stacks. I just completely failed that water bucket. So that should be enough. On the mini map I've got installed, there's a dark oak village pretty close by. Unfortunately, the river ends here, so we've got to get out. Wait, does this thing work on land as well? Okay, it does, but it's about as fast as sprinting. There is a bit more water here, but it ends over here. This is a really effective minecart track. I love how you get four blocks of space and then you just fall off. There's so many cats in these villages, we'll have to tame one or two or five. To be honest, villagers, you should not have built your houses out of such a valuable resource in the middle of a desert. Of course, someone's going to come along and steal it. That's someone being me. Come to think of it, I've already stolen so many building resources this video. We stole the floor from that first villager house, the brick foundation of that bandit tower, and now someone's roof. I am going to collect as many logs as I possibly can from this town. Either I'll collect all of them or I'll get bored. Either way, we're going to be walking away with a lot. What kind of name is this? Rigoberto. Listen, man, I'm sorry. Your house has seen some, uh, 
renovations. I'm sure you'll be fine. He has got a book in his chest, though. That's good. That's better than having an iPad and watching Skibbity Toilet. Why are all the residents here kids? And how do they all own houses? Oh my god, we found Steve. We found Steve. Shouldn't you be out doing my job? Killing the Ender Dragon and that kind of thing? No? Okay, bye then. What is Steve doing here? This is like some kind of tropical getaway for him. Well, not really tropical. We're in the middle of the scorching hot mesa. But you know what I mean. No, you don't. Because I'm not making any sense. I can hear a ridiculous amount of zombies right now. There must be a spawner underneath this house. Yep, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Oh, if only we have bullets right now, we could test out this gun. Instead, we'll have to settle for killing them all from up here. Hey, it's free XP. I don't mind. I did forget to bring any torches, which is kind of dumb. We found another trinket, though. You get two times more loot. Give me that. We have a spare slot. Let's get that equipped. I don't know if it means we get better loot odds from chests or if mobs drop more items when we kill them. Either way, this is the same person that programmed boats to go 100 miles an hour, so I have maximum faith in that charm. The only houses we haven't stolen wood from are these two holiday homes on the edge of town. They've even got green grass. They're living large. Not anymore. Look at this, a Wild West swimming pool. It's probably got a lot of bugs and sand in it. No thank you. Yo, what's up, Darren? Guess what? Hands up, I'm taking your roof. That's right. <laughs> Look, he's running away. Goodbye, Darren. Look at your house. It is a disgrace now. I've been looking forward to this. Let's get back in our boat. This is so stupid. Oh my, oh my, he just grew into a, uh, a, a big thing. Big, I can't think of the word. A full-on crocodile right before my eyes. I thought, oh, it's cute. There's a little baby crocodile. And then he suddenly transforms into a gigantic beast. Please leave me alone. Actually, what am I doing? I have full diamond armor. Come here, come here. That's right, we're gonna have it out, me and you. Ah, bow in awe, emus. Look what I just did. They don't seem very impressed. All right, let's zoom back home. Genuinely, this never gets old. I'd seem like I'm going on about it, but it is so much fun. It's just the fact that I had my expectations in the ground for this, and it was somehow amazing. We have plenty of dark oak now. We just need a bit of normal oak before we can start building our town. Also, we are going to have to build a giant wall around the whole thing, because otherwise, zombies will definitely feast upon the villagers. This tree farm has grown pretty mighty in size. I'm just going to AFK all night, so that these trees grow. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> I'll see you right now while I get this one tree. As I was saying, I will see you tomorrow. Right, let's go ahead and grab ourselves some wood. Let's cover up this hole with cobblestone and then we'll put red sand on top of it. And then we'll be able to get started on our house. This is plenty of space, I feel like. Now, I've had a look at some images of Wild West buildings and they're pretty much all just giant boxes, which is what this house is gonna be. We've got these wooden beams to hold it up along with the dark oak planks for the walls. I think this might actually be slightly too big, so I'm gonna bring it back a bit. What I also noticed about those buildings was that they tended to have a little walkway out on the front. We'll make this building two stories because we are the sheriff after all. We deserve something nice, especially with all the hard work we're gonna be doing providing for our citizens. And by that, I mean taking advantage of their trades, but they don't need to know that. We'll have small windows like this. Everything in the time period was kind of just cramped and rushed together. I'm much more used to building medieval houses with huge sweeping roofs, so this is a unique challenge. I've used the the same building style for so long now, it's nice to try something new. And just look at our tree farm now, there is so much wood here. Although I probably should have added some blocks to prevent the trees from growing this tall. I'm trying to harvest wood here, not skyscrapers. Anyway, let's keep working on our house. We'll go up by one more layer here. Or actually, because of how small and squat these buildings usually were, maybe we shouldn't have the extra layer. Now only having a two block ceiling would be pretty claustrophobic, so instead we can use slabs to provide that much needed extra bit of space. We'll fill all of this in. And now we'll build the second floor, which is going to be the exact same as the first. Forget everything I said about the height of the building. This looks like a munchkin house. I need to fix this. That also means breaking all of these slabs. Yay! I'm just glad I realized before I put the roof on. Laboring out in the Wild West. It ain't easy, partner. I know I promised I wouldn't do the accent anymore, but it is way too much fun. I'm sorry. I mean, come on. If you were playing Minecraft as a cowboy, don't tell me you wouldn't be doing the accent as well. Yeah, that looks so much better. You got Gosh darn hog-headed skeleton, you got me as mad as a hornet, son. You should be thanking the heavens above I don't have any bullets in this here rifle. I'll just chop you up. There's nothing really dividing these two floors right now. They look quite samey, so I'm going to add a different type of block to mix up the texture. I think some composters could look cool. It's either these or some stripped dark oak logs. Let's see how those look. It's a tough choice, but I think I'm going to go with the composters. That also means i got to go chop more wood. It is a never-ending cycle. I always end up 
look back at the tree farm one way or the other. Now that the composters are in, let's add a small little roof to our front walkway. Then we just fill it all in. I think this is coming together quite nicely. Now as for the roof, what I've seen a lot of Wild West buildings do is have the word of the building itself on the front and then from there the roof curves down. I'm going to first do a quick test where I try spell out the word sheriff using Minecraft blocks. So far I've written sure and yeah these letters leave a lot to be desired. I mean look at the R. I'm going to try using some letters that someone else has designed online and if that doesn't work we'll just use banners instead. I like these letters a lot more but they're just not going to fit up there. We only have 11 blocks of space and each letter takes up two plus the gap in between. So we'll put the letters on banners instead which I probably should have done from the start. I feel like that's just so much easier. I'm going to go ahead and borrow some wool from the bandit towers to use for banners so I will be right back. I have returned with plenty of wool. Let's go ahead and craft ourselves a loom and I'm of course going to be following a tutorial for this. And there we go. There's the S. Now we just got to make the rest of the letters. There's H. There's E. Now of course the next letter in Sheriff is R but for some reason I made F. I don't know why. Now we can actually make a second F banner by just placing it in the crafting grid with another blank banner. There we go. So now all we need is the R and the I. There's the R. So now we have Sheriff. I'm the Sheriff of this town. <laughs> and there we go. We've mastered fourth grade spelling. Now we can actually get on with building this place. We'll put our banners along the top. I've ended up making a set of white letters on black banners. Because from a distance, these black letters on white banners just completely blends in. You can barely read them. Like any eco-friendly town, we'll just throw these into a nearby well. And we'll hang up these new new banners. And look at that. That looks really cool. And now we'll go ahead and add the finishing touches. Now before we take a look at the final build, I'm going to smelt up some sand to make glass. Because then we can craft ourselves some modded windows. As well as some modded window shutters for that proper Wild West look. Then we'll throw this stuff in like so. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to present the sheriff's headquarters. This place looks so sick. I'm so happy with how this build turned out, although the inside leaves a lot to be desired. I'll add in a little staircase back here and then we'll use the top area as our living space because it's a bit nicer. We've got these nice windows that you can open and close, which is pretty cool. And the ceiling's also higher on this floor, which makes it nicer to live in than down here. The first build of our Wild West town is complete. Let's grab our bed and enchantment table and all that kind of stuff. This is the Minecraft equivalent of that that men will live like this and see no issue meme. If it's got a crafting table and a bed, it does the job. We will place down our storage system on the bottom floor because I don't want to have to keep running up the stairs every time I want to get something. I've got loads of dark oak wood, but I don't want to use that to craft chests because unlike oak wood, we can't grow more of it. We've got to prioritize the more plentiful wood source here. I'm also going to waste some of our diamonds on a hoe in order to hack away at the leafy mess that is this tree farm. Be gone, leaves! Be gone! We've got not one, not two, but three gigantic oak trees, which I cannot be bothered to drop down. Look at these monstrosities. Anyway, let's continue filling out the storage system. We'll also put stairs above these so that they can actually open still. I've now got to get all of our stuff organized, so I will be right back. All of our stuff is now organized into these chests, which is very lovely to see. However, we have a rather pressing problem, and that's that these five pieces of bread we have, that's all the food we have left. I mean, we've got these god apples and regular golden apples, but we don't want to waste those. So we are going to zoom on over to this village and pray that it has some food for us. Where's the food? Hands up, where's the food? These villagers did not do a good job making sure their city is walkable, did they? Oh, there's some dried kelp blocks here. Don't mind if I do. And an emerald. We'll steal all the money. That can't hurt. Do they expect all their citizens to become Spider-Man? What is this? And what about the seniors in this village? Do you think you're going to see an 80-year-old elderly villager scale the sides of this mountain in order to go to the shops. I don't think so. Please guys, where are your crops? There's some fish in here. That actually brings up the point we could just fish. Sometimes villagers confuse me. Why are you sat in a composter? Yeah, exactly. Now you're embarrassed. Oh, we've got some bacon in here. Thank you. And there's a spider legs trinket, which apparently would let us climb like a spider. We've also got some raw beef and an emerald. I'm sorry about your bacon, Ratchel. 
Oh, Rachel. But it's all mine now. Bye. Right, well, this is the perfect place to try out this spider trinket. It lets us climb like a Minecraft spider, which means we can just infinitely go up walls like this. But in terms of actually climbing around difficult terrain, we'll just fall off. Although it is cool to stick to walls like this. It's a neat little trinket, but not one that we're going to use. I'm not going to lie. At some point, I will retire the electric paddle that we've got just because I do want to use and make trains and it kind of invalidates them completely. Now, we did get some food, but unfortunately, we didn't find any wheat seeds in that village. However, we do have pumpkin and melon seeds, and we can use those in combination with some glow berries and an apple in order to make some fruit salads. Every single piece of food here can be grown and collected in some kind of way, so this is probably going to be our primary source of food, which means I'm going to be a warmongering, thieving sheriff who eats fruit salad. I mean, my mum did always say to eat your fruits and veggies. I kind of don't want to live off them. Let's set up a small and honestly quite pathetic pumpkin and melon farm out here. Soon, this will be way more impressive, trust me. Let's make ourselves a brand new diamond pickaxe because I think it's time we headed back to the mines. Because what we need right now, aside from acquiring more than three pieces of food, is lots and lots of both copper and zinc. We need copper not only for bullets, but also to create machines, and zinc is purely to create machinery. We can't just craft the items needed for trains, we actually have to create them using specific pieces of machinery. And one of the components we need in order to make the machines, in order to make the trains, is in the nether so we'll be going there soon we found some zinc so let's grab all of this i was going to go down to deep slate level but apparently copper spawns more commonly higher up i can't believe i'm actually searching and wanting copper this feels weird there we go we found some i hate being excited about this this is wrong copper is useless but it's not it would be really nice to get fortune on a pickaxe at some point i'm hoping that soon we'll break into a cave because let's be honest strip mining is a very 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 boring there's loads of copper up here. This is great. And there we go. We found a cave as well as a skeleton who is about to die. He died before I expected, so he kind of ruined my line. That's so rude, honestly. He should have been more considerate when he died. We have actually explored these caves before, but for obvious reasons, just completely ignored the copper. I'm also going to grab some coal while we're here. I really don't know how much we need, so I'm going to grab a stack of zinc and two stacks of copper. It might be far too much. It might be way too little. Who knows? What I do know is this will be a lot easier with fortune. Copper spawns everywhere, though, so it's not much of a problem. And we've already acquired almost two and a half stacks of copper. We do only have 49 zinc, but I think that'll be okay. Now I just gotta try and remember the way out, which is up here. Oh, hello. Get out my mind. We do actually need gunpowder in order to craft bullets, for obvious reasons, so I'm gonna stay up and kill creepers. One gunpowder and one copper ingot makes 32 bullets though, so we shouldn't have to worry about it too much. The sun's coming up and we managed to get seven gunpowder, which isn't the worst. As a wise man named Mosey once said, seven is more than zero. Although clearly I'm not very wise because I'm going in the wrong direction. Our house is here. All right, let's get all of our copper and zinc smelted up. So it actually costs three gunpowder and four copper ingots to make 32 heavy bullets, but we can still afford that. We might as well craft a stack of them. And at long last, we can load our gun. Unfortunately, it's the middle of the day, so we can't test this out yet. I guess we could fire one shot. Ooh, that sounds powerful. Also, just listen to this reload. That is satisfying. The next item we need to get is the blaze burner. And this effectively allows us to capture and harness the power of blazes. However, it requires iron sheets. And in order to get those, we need to make a mechanical press in order to compress our iron. So we first create andesite alloy. And we then use those to make shafts. We then apply the andesite alloy to a strip log in order to make andesite casing. And we then combine the shaft, the andesite casing, and a block of iron to make the mechanical press. Now the press itself is crafted, but we actually need to power it in order to make it work. So we need to make some cog wheels as well as another andesite casing. Then we combine the casing with some cog wheels to make a gearbox. And we then flip that into a vertical gearbox. Then we add on a couple shafts, the gearbox, another shaft, another vertical gearbox. Look who's shown up. He's invisible because it's nighttime, but we can still talk to him. Because this is modded Minecraft, his trades are somehow even worse than usual. We can buy a cockroach thing, or we could buy banana peel. We can pay one emerald for banana peels. Are you serious, mate? You're invisible, so I can't look you in the eye, but trust me, 
you've got some serious issues. You best leave this town, partner. Your trays ain't welcome here. Anyway, going back to our glorious contraption, we will make a water wheel. We put it here. Go away, zombie. Not the time. And then we place some water below it to make it spin. And now this should power, but it's not because I've done something wrong. If you're good with the create mod, I'm sure this is very frustrating to watch. I am very new to this and I apologize. Let's actually turn our water wheel into a large water wheel. And then we place that down along with some water to make it spin. Nope. There we go. I got it spinning. There's definitely something wrong with this. I will figure it out. Well, I've been fiddling around and I created this contraption and I've just realized the reason the crusher wasn't moving is because there was nothing for it to crush. Look, now it's going to work. I feel so dumb. Now we can crush all of our iron into sheets. This is obviously very ugly and we're going to need to build lots more machines in the future. So I have plans to make a giant factory to keep it all hidden out of the public view. I mean, I know our town is mostly comprised of dirt houses and a cobblestone box, but still, we got to keep things like this hidden. It looks ugly. Anyway, let's retire this contraption for now. We have enough iron sheets for two blaze burners, but they actually require netherrack in order to be crafted. So we'll have to make them once we get to the nether. We have five of obsidian right now, so I'm going to yoink some from this ruined nether portal. We could just repair this portal, but instead, let's make our own personal one that's closer to our base. Alright, the portal has been set up in this nearby hill. We're ready to go. We've got enchanted diamond armor, so I'm not too worried, but we'll still have to play it safe in here. Alright, decent spawn. This also gives us a great chance to test out our new gun. Oh, I missed because I suck. There we go. <laughs> it's pretty good. Oh, hey, mate. What's up? Goodbye. <laughs> this is so much fun. No way. No way did we just spawn right next to a fortress. What is our luck right now? Before I forget, let's also make the blaze burners. There we go. And would you look at that? This guy's shown up right on time. All we have to do is right click him with a blaze burner. And he's gone. He's been yoinked. How does it feel? How does it feel? I was not expecting this to be so straightforward. Ooh, get back. Come here, Blaze. Get yoinked. Oh, no, with a skelly. Ooh, move. Guys, can we maybe not? Can we just not do this today? I mean, you guys tried. You really tried. Also, can you stop shooting fireballs at me? Boom. With this weapon, ghasts are a thing of the past. Goodbye. <laughs> anyway, I was not expecting for us to find another fortress quite so quickly, so I'm going to stay in the nether for a bit longer and try and find a bastion. And looking on the map, there's actually one pretty close by. As I said earlier, we are going to be taking on some incredibly difficult modded raids later on, so we are going to need to get netherite armor as soon as possible. Oh, we've got a little dungeon here. Excuse me, mate. I'm just going to rob you. Or I would if there was any chests in here. Wow. We're already just down to our dried kelp. We don't have any other food left. Also, you might think the Endermen can't teleport away fast enough to avoid bullets. Yes, they can. Hello, Piglin. Goodbye, Piglin. We just got to mine through this wall and then we should arrive at the Bastion. There it is. And there's also a very cold strider. The question is, can this weapon one-shot Piglin brutes? No, it can't. It can't even two-shot them. It takes three bullets to take one down, so they're still a major threat. This gun does 22 damage, a diamond sword does seven, so it's effectively like three hits of a diamond sword per shot, which means the regular piglins are no problem at all. Goodbye. There's a piglin brute below here, but he's taking cover. Hello, sir. Allow me to introduce you to death. There's another one down there. Let's take care of him. What's in this chest here? Oh, netherite scrap. These spirit orbs are part of a Zelda mod I installed for for one specific item, so these are irrelevant. We don't need to worry about them. We've got a gills trinket, which allows us to breathe underwater, and we've also got another piece of ancient debris. I think because of our four-leaf clover charm, we get way better loot. There's golden carrots in here. That is a nice sight, as well as a block of gold. You can't go wrong with that. Sometimes you've got to kill these piglin brutes the old-fashioned way. We don't have an infinite supply of bullets, so I'm just going to clear out the piglin brutes nearest to the chest, and then we'll go in. Good. Bye and goodbye. Ooh, get away from me. We gotta defend the bridge. There's the magma cube spawner. Let's clear out a few of these magma cubes. And we should just be able to grab all this loot now. Come on, chest. Don't let us down. And they do not disappoint. I can't even look at the loot because I'm getting swarmed by magma cubes. Go away. There's also a pair of prop four diamond boots in this chest. And then this chest has... 
Ooh, some diamonds, some diamond armor. And of course, before we leave, we'll grab all of this gold. I do want to loot that chest though. Let's clear this guy out the way. And now we hop across. What have you got for us? Uh, nothing. <laughs> Great. We've got all the loot and we're running low on bullets. So it is time to get out of here. Do not snipe me off. <laughs> no thanks. To be fair though, there is also the loot in the other part of the bastion. I can't turn down the opportunity for some free loot. Also, if you guys all stand here so I can kill you and you have no chance of hitting me, that is really appreciated. I really commend your dedication to letting me rob you. It is really nice. I can still hear more brutes, so we're potentially not out of the woods just yet. Or maybe we are. Okay. There's soul speed three, but that's whatever. What does this chest have? Ooh, diamond pickaxe. It's not very good though. We have a spare slot, so we might as well pick it up. And now we just got to get to this second chest. Once again, everyone's lining up to be chopped down. Wonderfully generous, these piglins. Can you stop shooting me with that crossbow? Okay then. All right, this is the big boy, the double chest, the supreme, the creme de la creme. And it's rub... Never mind, it's not rubbish. We got some ancient debris. That is lovely. And we've also got some more obsidian. And now, folks, we shall take our leave. I tip my hat to you, Bastion. I'm real grateful for all this loot you done gave me. What do we think? Is the cowboy accent improving? Or is it getting worse? I don't know. We got the blaze burners and we got the netherite. So let's head back. We should be almost back to our portal now. There it is. Back home we go. I'm warning you, you better get the hell off. Off my property. You got sand in your ears or something? Instead of this video being titled 100 Days in the Wild West, it should be I spent 100 days doing the worst cowboy impression anyone's ever had the displeasure of hearing. Now that we've got the blaze burners, the next thing to do is to collect the materials to build our new factory. However, before we do that, I have spotted this little bandit encampment on the map, so I think we should go and raid that first. I feel like there's a good chance it contains gunpowder, and we really need more of that. I should have brought the spider trinket along. It would make getting up these hills a lot easier. And there it is. I can already see a spawner. Oh, they're riding hoglins. What? No, 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 no. Those are hoglins. This is going to be a little bit more difficult than I first anticipated. No, stay back. Thankfully, the hoglins can only go as fast as the zombie riding it, which makes this a lot easier. Please break. There we go. What do we have in this chest then? What? This stuff sucks. Because of how slow the hoglins are, we should just be able to avoid them. Uh, those skeletons have arrows of harming. We can snipe them with our gun at least. Anything interesting here? Just iron. That kind of sucks. Nothing. Oh, slime balls. We need those. Haha, <laughs> look at you trying to climb up. You can't. Anything in this chest? Not really. There is a jungle tree though, so we might be able to get a sapling. Never mind. It dropped an oak sapling. These must be oak leaves. Is there any loot in this tower? It's all terrible. What am I getting hit by? And there's phantoms around as well, which is really annoying. Leave me alone. Let's bridge across here. Oh, skeleton there. No, thank you. Anything in this chest? Chest. It's all iron. I think it's all just going to be iron. I was under the impression I was robbing rich people. Clearly, I was mistaken. We might as well just leave. There's nothing there we could use. And we also only have three bullets left. I'm just going to spend the night killing creepers for gunpowder. I've managed to collect 30 gunpowder, which is enough for now. So let's craft up some more heavy bullets. And we now have two stacks of them, which should last us a while. Let's also craft a shotgun, because not only is the weapon itself cheap, so is its ammo. We can get 48 shells for four copper ingots, one gold nugget, and only one gunpowder. We'll grab two sets of those. And there we go, our new weapon is ready to go. We'll also craft a wire stock and a tactical grip. Then we can fully kit out this gun by attaching these pieces onto it. We're going to head over to the bandit at towers to pillage more bricks in order to build our mega factory, but I think it would also be a pretty good time to test out this new shotgun. Okay, the render distance is now in the bin in order for the game to function properly. Let's just break in. I see a chest back here. Let's check it out. It's not very good. Die. What's up, boy? Bring me the pillagers. Die. <laughs> this thing is so sick. We are going to sweep this place from top to bottom. Oh my days. There's so many of them. There's so many of them. Keep firing. Oh my. I think I slightly underestimated the amount of people in this bandit towers. <laughs> I keep having to reload as well. There's so many pillagers. What is that? What is that? Relax. Why is that guy so fast? I've been driven all the way out of this place. I was inside and now I'm all the way out of here. I thought this would be easy, but clearly I was mistaken. Every enemy in here is so tanky. Oh no. One, two, three, four, five, six. It takes a full shotgun mag to take down one of those skeletons. We got to make sure we keep taking out the spawners. Go away. No pillager. No. Back off, please. He's actually going to kill me. Please just die. Just die. 
Thank you. What's up then? Reload, please. Thank you. There are a lot of these guys. It's just so confusing how bad the loot is in here though. Look at this. Only gold ingots and iron nuggets. Get away from me. The towers themselves are so absurdly hard. It's insane. Ugh, get out of here. This is just a thought, but maybe all the super overpowered free loot at the top should be put in the barrels that are inside with all the difficult enemies. It just seems a little bit counterproductive, you know? Why die over gold ingots and slime balls? I didn't think it could get any worse, but it do- Ooh! You're interrupting me roasting your possessions. Stop it. Jewel wieldy boy, get back. This is the loot that's being protected by pillagers with firework crossbows and dual wielding diamond sword users. Oh my days. It's also time to leave because we only have six shotgun shells left. Excuse me, creeper. I'm trying to leave. No, go away, pillager. No, this is not dad hang out with the kid to make happy memories time. This is leave me alone time. The bad news is your dad's no longer with us. The good news is neither are you. It is impossible to get anything done when you're getting swarmed by mobs. So I'm going to go home and go to bed. We did actually get three epic hat grab bags. And even though I'm not going to take the cowboy hat off, I'm interested to see what these actually give us. The first one gave us an RGB big ribbon. And uh, yeah, I'm not wearing that. The next one gave us a disco ball. Look how stupid that looks. What? And the final one gave us a TV. I look hideous. Let's go ahead and grab the bricks from the bandit towers, which is the reason we went there in the first place. But then I got distracted shooting all those mobs and being an epic cowboy. I mean, come on. When you've just crafted a shotgun and put a bunch of cool attachments on it, you want to test it out. It kind of puts into perspective how powerful the enemies here are when they survive six direct shotgun blasts. What? How anyone is supposed to beat this without full netherite is beyond me. I'm sure I'm going to get a few comments like, Oh, you're bad. I'm five years old and I beat this with leather armor and a stick. And yeah, well done, mate. Really well done. I wonder what level of crime this falls under. Like, can you imagine being the poor guy in charge of this place, having to call the police? Like, yeah, some guy wielding a shotgun ran in here, caused a bunch of mayhem. And then he came back a day later and now he's mining out the foundation of one of our towers. Please send help. Once we get the factory going and we have trains, that's when we'll retire the electric paddle. I'll upload this mod pack to CurseForge and leave a link to it in the description below. So if you'd like to try out any of these really fun Wild West mods, feel free. We now have a moderate amount of bricks, which should be enough for our factory. I hope it's enough because I don't want to come back and mine more. We are running desperately low on food now, but I actually made a critical mistake with this farm. Melons and pumpkins won't grow on red sand. They need dirt. Hopefully soon we'll see the first few crops here. We're so low on food now though that I think the best option is to go back to the bandit camp and start farming hoglins. Our best bet is to swipe at the hoglins with our fire aspect sword and then finish them off with a gun, which then gives us really quick and easy cooked pork chops. I did break this spawner, but thankfully there's one over there. And there they are, the hogs are here. So we set them on fire and then we grab the shotgun. Then we get another hit in. These guys have jump boost. What's going on? Get back. Goodbye. And there we have it. Cooked pork. There's another hoggy boy. Get out of here. Spawn some more. Come on. I need food. The wither skeletons that are riding them are actually carrying jump boost potions. So when they die, they drop them and splash everything around them. I need cooked pork. Oh, that's a really cool sword you've got there, mate. Have you tried a gun? They give you jump boost six. This is so weird. Is this going to kill me? Please no. We're fine. Wait, we have feather falling. What am I afraid of? I wonder if we can make this spawner more effective by removing the blocks around it. More pork for us. Let's give this spawner the maximum amount of space to work with. Oh my god. I mean, the plan did work. These guys have the jump boost now. Why am I fighting flying pigs? Get back. Oh, goodbye. What does this chest have? Nothing good. We now have 54 cooked pork chops, which should definitely be enough. The four leaf clover trinket that gives us extra drops is so useful. Plus, I'm sure we can get a looting three sword because I've just noticed we're already level 39. And if you remember from earlier, we've got that double spawner really close to our base, so we can definitely definitely set that up as well. Let's speed on back home. Nothing's grown yet, but I have hope that we'll get some crops soon. The food situation is under control for the moment, so now I'm going to head to the mines and collect some granite. Our factory is going to be made out of bricks, but we'll also use some granite to add a bit of extra texture. Also, I really should remove these blocks. I'm hitting my head on every single one. There's a nice granite deposit here, so let's get that mined up. We don't need nearly as much of this compared to the brick, but we still need a fair amount. We definitely need to get some higher level enchantments. This unenchanted diamond pick is so slow. I've just been mindlessly swinging my pickaxe. This is the 
biggest granite vein I've ever seen. I've already gotten five stacks out of this bad boy. We've also uncovered a big vein of zinc, which is nice. I'm also going to collect some deep slate. I think some gray deep slate accents on our factory would look really cool. This is probably going to take a while. We now have a whole load of materials. Back up to the surface we go. Excuse me, creeper. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? Gun beats bow. There's some more free gunpowder over here. Ready for this 360? Boom! You may be a mobile turret now, Skeleton, but you're no match for me. You're no match. Oh, I missed. You're no match. There we go. I should probably stop wasting ammo like this, but it's just so fun. Dead. 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 Oh, pentakill. Then we zoom away in our boat. Grow, please. I think this area here would be a good spot for our factory. Real quick, if you're enjoying the video so far, please consider subscribing. We're trying to hit 500k by the end of the year, and with your help, we can do it. This shall be the spot for our glorious factory. Oh. <gasps> We have crops! Yes! We have grown something instead of shooting and pillaging for it. Let's get all of those turned into seeds. And we shall immediately plant more. Soon, my friends, we will be feasting on fruit salads. And cooked pork, of course. Let's bone meal all of these. It is a glorious day, ladies and gentlemen. And another one's just grown. And another one! This is some major farm expansion. That is incredibly exciting, but we gotta get on with this factory. And as per usual, I'm gonna plan it out with dirt. Okay, the basic shape for the factory is done. I've also added on the outlines of some big chimneys to our factory. There's these two little ones here, and then one giant one back here. First things first, let's outline the whole thing with polished granite. I've added some spots where pillars are going to go, which should give the structure some depth. Then we'll go along with a mix of these granite and brick stairs. We'll build the entrance later. We'll just knock a hole through this. I'm going to cheat a bit at the back and not bother putting the stairs in because no one's ever going to see this. I've been doing a bit of experimenting and this is what I got so far for the entrance. It looks pretty tall and imposing, kind of like a castle, which is what we want. We'll run a row of dark oak fences along the top here and then we'll open them all. Actually, I'm going to put Put these a block higher. Yeah, I like that. Now we'll fill in the top area up here. That is the front done for now. I've left space for a big window up at the top. Now we've got to go ahead and build the pillars and walls for the entire thing. So I'll be right back. All right, the outside of the factory is now complete. There is so much space inside here. All that's really left now are the windows and the roof. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves some lava from this nearby pool. And we'll use that to smelt up a bunch of red sand. We need some deep slate, so the sheriff is going off duty for a little bit. And now that we have plenty of deep slate, we shall return to our post. Not only are we the sheriff, we're also the farmer, the architect, and the gunsmith of this town as well. So we're basically working four jobs at once. We'll dye our glass like gray and we'll also make a whole bunch of deep slate tile slabs let's get this roof done the basic idea here is that these two parts that jut out on the sides are going to connect to the main roof at the top factories have quite short and squat roofs which is why we're using slabs instead of stairs we'll use some cobble deep slate to fill in the gaps in the roof and then we fill the whole thing in with deep slate tiles we'll do the same up here we're almost done building now and with this final slab the roof is now complete Complete. I don't have a water bucket, so we'll have to jump off and break our legs. I also added a few extra details like these deep slate walls and these dark oak fence gates. Before we can take a look at the glorious finished product though, we do need to add in the window panes. Let's throw in these glass blocks and we'll do the same on this side. Actually, let's swap these for glass panes. There we go. And now for this main central window, we'll use the glass blocks. We've already got some workers showing up in here. Too bad they don't have any rights. We did actually just get an epic hat grab bag. And this one gives us a potion head. That is stupid. I have actually forgotten to do the windows on this side, but just pretend you didn't see that. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to present our brand new factory. This place turned out so good. We got to fix the floor in here and the windows and actually start building the machines inside, but we've been doing a lot of building. So let's take a quick break for a few days. I will say though, that is an absolutely lovely addition to our Wild West town. I think it's about time we cross a new gun. We combine copper, gold, and iron to make tin bronze ingots, and then we combine those with blaze powder in order to make scorched bronze ingots, and then you realize you don't have enough blaze powder, so you run
run to the nether. You then collect the blaze powder that you were missing. And then once you finally have enough, you hightail it out of the fortress. Oh my days, these guys show up in so many of my modded playthroughs and they're always so annoying every single time. Let me tell you, this brings me great joy. This is for all the times you've made my life an absolute nightmare. It's fine. It's fine. We're fine. Get back. Get back, Skirton. Anyway, let's get out of here. Now we can craft the remaining Scorch Bronze Ingots, and now using those Bronze Ingots, as well as a scrap of Netherite, we can assemble the Frontier Sidearm. And this thing is just a gigantic over-the-top revolver. Now, in order to make the bullets for this thing, you actually need pure gunpowder, as well as some more Scorch Bronze Ingots. And there we go. We can craft ourselves 32 Scorch Big Bullets. Let's load this up. And not only does this weapon do more damage than both our rifle and our shotgun, but it's also incredibly fast firing. I don't want to shoot it because its ammo is so expensive. We'll just have to wait until we get into a fight. Because it's a one-handed weapon, we can also hold our shield and shoot at the same time. I'm also going to craft some more ammo for our rifle. And this is completely unrelated, but we've actually got another epic hat grab bag, which gave us another bow. Yay. Anyway, we've been in this place for ages. Let's go out and do some exploring. I'm not really looking for anything in particular, although a horse would be really nice to find. Oh yeah, and some dark oak wood would come in handy for sure. Also, we've already found something. We have found ourselves a Badlands Desert Temple. There's a bunch of husks in here, so I guess we could try out this new gun. One shot. One shot. One shot one shot and one shot. It's so good. Every time I fire it though, I cry a little bit inside. It's basically like shooting pure money. There has to be a spawner in here somewhere. Yep, these husks just keep coming. There it is. I knew it. And there must be one under this staircase too. Just checking under the pillars real quick. Let's block the main area off so a husk doesn't fall down the pit and set off the pressure plate. There's no pressure plate here, which is weird. I wonder if the chests themselves are trapped. Look at that. You see that red bit around the latch and the TNT below, we would have been blown to pieces if we opened one of these. I've also just discovered a completely unrelated spawner room right next to this place. I will be breaking this, thank you very much. Telemu sent ya. And we found ourselves a gap hall. That is lovely. We've also got another epic hat grab bag. All I want is not the rainbow bow. Please anything but the rainbow bow. We've got an RGB beanie, an RGB party hat, and some headphones, which is pretty cool. Completely ruins the Wild West aesthetic, but <laughs> they look sick. Don't worry, the cowboy hat is staying. We should be safe to open these chests now. There's some gunpowder, which is definitely useful. This one has a gap hall and a loyalty three book. We're never going to use a trident in this world. And this final chest has, oh, a gapple and a ghast eye trinket, which gives 10 extra hearts. <laughs> Look at my health. That is not fair. That is not fair. I can't use this thing in good faith when it just completely breaks the game. This trinkets mod is awesome, but it's so overpowered. It's kind of crazy. You should never just be able to find an item that doubles your base health. Anyway, the day is old, but the night is young. So let's keep exploring. We've got some gunpowder on legs here. Thank you very much. We need to find a village with a horse. That is the dream. We've got the revolver. We've got the cowboy hat. We've got the sheriff office. The horse is all we need to complete the image. You know what makes us the world's best cowboy though? This 360. Ooh. Imagine you're watching a western movie and the main guy gets challenged to a duel and then he just does a 360 quick scope. That would be amazing. That movie would deserve to win every movie award that has ever existed. It would win the award for best movie and it would win the award for worst movie. Hey creeper. Goodbye creeper. I'm not seeing anything interesting just yet but that could change. There's nothing out here but Badlands. I would no, because I set the world to Badlands only. <laughs> Yo, this looks sick. This would be such a cool spot for a Wild West town. Although for a survival playthrough, this would be kind of a nightmare because you'd have to climb out of the bowl every time you wanted to go anywhere. I could use another Ender Pearl, so let's attack this Enderman minding his own business. Goodbye, sir. There is a raid outpost over here. I guess we could go and Uno reverse and raid them. But there's also another bandit outpost that way. I think it's time to bring out the revolver, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Goodbye. 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 <laughs> Get out of here. Goodbye. Oh, I'm out of ammo. 
One second. Give me a second, mate. Goodbye. Hello, my friend. It is your lucky day for you shall be free. Hopefully he never finds out about the many crimes I've committed against his brothers. Uh, yeah, I said nothing. Goodbye. What's in this chest up here? Oh, okay then. Cobwebs and onions, just like my own kitchen cupboards. Let's leap into this pool of water and we shall continue on our merry way. These outposts are never worth raiding, but we might as well check just out of curiosity. Hello, my good friend. Please go away. There's lots of jungle trees in this one, but it's still got absolutely rubbish loot. Oh boy, I wonder what this chest has. Absolute rubbish. I will take this bed though since I forgot to bring one. And actually, let's pull these spruce planks up out of the floor because we can't actually get spruce wood any other way. Spruce wood is undoubtedly hands down 1000% the undisputed goat of all woods in Minecraft. No, I will not accept any other opinions on this. There's some more hoggy boys here. Not the usual way I get bacon. Usually I buy it from the store, but it is what it is. This landscape is so cool. This biome is up there with Tiger Forest for my favorite biome in the game. That is a crocodile. Please go away. Get back. We've ended up with Bad Omen from murdering those pillagers, which is kind of annoying. So I guess we can just bestow it upon the next unfortunate village that we run across. To be fair, our armor and gear is pretty decent. I feel like we could survive a level one raid. This is what I mean about this being my favorite biome. Just look at this scenery. I sound like my parents on car journeys where they're like, Look out at the scenery, it looks so nice. It's come full circle. When I was seven years old playing Angry Birds on my iPod Touch, I did not get what they meant. But now, now I'm starting to appreciate what they were saying. It's completely pointless, but watch me boat clutch this. I suck. We found another of these temples, but I can't really be bothered. I guess we could loot it. At least now we know where the spawners are. There we go. Let's get rid of all the TNT. What have these just got for us? Uh, capacity three. Oh, that's a gun enchantment. Let's swap it for this knockback one book I picked up. There's a cracked crown trinket in this chest with a very interesting tagline, and it gives us plus 50% from all stats. I don't really know what that means, but we can try it on. I don't know if it gives us bonus damage or less hunger or bonuses to potion effects or something, but just for the line alone, I will keep it. Oh, wow, and there's a god's crown in this chest, which is just that cracked crown, but way better. Actually, no, this crown is the best. Shout out to Fallen Kingdom, one of the best Minecraft parodies ever made. There's also a Bane of Raiders 5 in this chest, although I prefer to get sharpness on my sword, so we'll leave that. 20,000 likes on this video, and I'll make a video on a second channel where I sing the entirety of Fallen Kingdom. That's a promise. I have no idea why I've made this promise. It will turn out to be a horrible idea. I know Fallen Kingdom is a lot of people's favorite Minecraft parody, but for me personally, my favorite as a kid was always Don't Mine at Night. I used some of my own money to buy that song the iTunes store. That's how dedicated I was. You guys might have noticed the increase in uploads lately, and that's because I have an editor now. And no, he's not allowed out of the basement. He has to make more Minecraft videos. We still haven't found a village, which is kind of surprising. Oh, hello. The generation on this is certainly something. <laughs> this wooden bridge is so strong, it's holding up the entirety of this skyscraper by itself. If I had more than 11 revolver bullets to my name, I would go and do a proper raid on those towers, but instead, we'll pillar up and cheese them. What we're mainly after here are gapples, diamonds, good enchanted books, and blaze powder. See you later, boys. I'm off to bigger and greater things while you burn to ash. I guess we could put them out of their misery. There's a big old sinkhole below this place. That seems to be somewhat of a cause for concern. Once again, sorry for the lag. My PC does not like this place. I'll take the apples. Those are definitely useful. We've got a ton of diamonds in here. There's blaze powder in this chest. That is a welcome sight. Let's bridge over to the other towers. And my entire plan here is to throw this pearl and hope I don't miss. Please? I think that should be fine. Yes! There's another pearl in this chest too. There's lots of iron in here, but we don't need iron. Across we go. There's some more pearls in here. Yes, please. A sharpness four book. We need that. And tons of diamonds in this chest. This place is so good for diamonds. There's also a prot three on breaking three chest plate, which we'll take because then we can combine it with our other one. A new helmet, which is very nice. And it's actually much better than our current one. I'm leaping across these towers like I'm Aladdin. I know he leapt across small buildings, but same thing. There's also some Prot 3 Unbreaking 3 leggings which we'll take. And now we just pearl over to that last tower. And there's some more stuff in here that's useful. And just 
seven diamonds chilling in this chest. Okay. I guess it wouldn't hurt to say a quick hello to whoever's in these towers. Hello? Anyone home? Any enemy combatants willing to engage in a duel? Oh, just one skeleton. There we go. That's who I wanted to see. There are plenty of enemies down here. Get back, creeper. Put that axe down. Is this some kind of barracks down here? What is this? Wait, guys, I just saw something. We just found Pepsi, baby. Pepsi in the Wild West. Give me this. This is more valuable than anything we've found so far. We don't even need to loot any more of this. We have their Pepsi. Let's get out of here. It feels like we've been searching forever. Where is the nearest village? There's a little outpost up ahead, but that's not a village. And it has pillagers. I can't even be bothered to loot you guys. There's an exposed cave spider spawner out here. Let's get rid of that. I say that like I'll ever return to this place. What's that I see? That's two free minecart chests. There's a third one over there there. Surely we get at least one god apple. We have just found a scarab amulet, which gives us plus 110% speed in sand. I don't know if this works with red sand, but we're about to find out. Oh, it does! That's so sick! It does kind of give me motion sickness, though, so I'm gonna put it back. Nothing really in this chest, and this one has nothing. There is one final chest out here. Can it save the day? No. No, it can't. For the life of me, I cannot find a village. No, that's a stupid bandit outpost. There's another mine shaft over here, but I don't care. And before anyone says anything, yes, I know I can get dark oak logs from these mine shafts. You just can't get nearly as many as you would from a village. Plus, we still got to do this raid. I'm just going to mine through the wall here. Hopefully, we make it out the other side. Ah, yes. Thank you, Minecraft. Another bandit towers. Yay. Why? Why is this here? Where are the houses with vast swathes of dark oak logs? Where are the townsfolk that are incredibly and weirdly gullible? Where are the iron golems that I may or may not have committed several felonies against? In the Wild West, you're either having a great time building a town, building a factory, making guns, or you're searching this barren expanse of nothingness for a stupid town that won't spawn. There's the guys that like to rob towns. Where's the town to rob? At this rate, I'm going to end up joining in with the raid when it spawns. Get out the way, creeper. I'm not in the mood. Well, there's a zombie villager, and he's got a noise. So we must be close to a village, surely. Also, goodbye. There's a ruined portal with no golden apple. I know we could just go home because there is a village right next to our base, but I need to exploit those people. I can't have them killed in a raid. I'm also not going to bother looting this temple. Oh! <gasps> Finally! I've been searching for so long. Hello, good people. Allow me to bring an army to your doorstep. Hello! As you can see at the top, this is a default raid. This is the standard Minecraft vanilla raid. It is absolute pandemonium in the streets. These pillagers are coming from everywhere. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I think we're horrendously underprepared ammo-wise, so let's see how this goes. Let's get a little vantage point on one of these houses. We can provide aerial support from the rooftops. We only have 30 bullets left. I'm gonna be honest, ladies and gentlemen, it is looking a little bit dire. No, get away from me. I'm gonna do my best to save our ammo for when the Ravagers and Evokers start showing up. Get out of here, mate. We have also got our Frontier sidearm for when things get really bad. I really wish I'd packed my bow. Oh no, just hit a villager. I'm sorry, mate. I'm sorry. Come back here. You're not part of the raid, Skirton. You're not part of the team. There's our first Ravager. I've got to take him on using a sword. This is not fair. Oh, please just die. He's already hit me for so much. Let's see a gap for precautionary measures. Come on. It's over for you, bro. This is the third wave and I'm already getting destroyed. Nope, you gotta go. There we go. Our boots are cooked. Right, let's make a spare pair and we'll get those equipped. We've got 28 bullets left for our rifle and 15 for the revolver. Oh, please die. He's hit me for so much. Let's take care of the witches. She hit me with 30 seconds of poison. Are you serious? I fear I have greatly overestimated our capabilities to take this on. Poison's so annoying, bro. It is pretty cool fighting in the streets, though, I will say. What? Don't scare me like that. And I got hit with more poison. Yo, this witch has actually got me on the ropes. <laughs> Not anymore. That zombie has an enchanted sword. Oh, dear Lord. They brought out another Ravager. This is really not the time to be afflicted with poison. To be honest, I'm not sure if there's going to 
be any villagers standing before we can finish this raid. No! Oh! No, they brought out the Vex as well. Oh my god. There's an Evoker running around as well. I need to put him down. I don't see this guy though. I can't get a clear shot. I don't want to waste my bullets on the Vex, but they're so hard to kill with just a sword. I don't like walking around these streets because I could get ambushed at any time. Oh! Where's that Evoker hiding? I just need to get him with one shot. They have barely any health, so it should be doable. I just can't find him. Go on in. Go on in. Get out my face. I guarantee I'm going to run into him around a corner and then he's going to summon a bunch more Vex. I see more of his little demon children. I just don't see him. It's like playing cat and mouse. Where is this guy? No. Up the stairs. Jump off. Parkour. Get out of here. Oh, there we go. He's been outlined. Believe he should be just through this door. Nope. FBI open up. Dead. <laughs> oh my God. He dropped two totems. Let's get this totem equipped. And now we just got to take care of this Ravager. Thankfully, his owner's an idiot. So this is fairly easy. Come here. That's the fifth wave done. That was only the fifth out of seven. I will say though, we've got two totems and we've got God apples if we need them. We've also managed our ammo pretty well. We still have a reasonable amount to get us out of any bad situation. I don't actually know where this sixth raid spawned. They're in the streets. I see them. Wait, no, it's a defeat. All the villagers died. You stupid pillagers. I'm going to be honest. This worked out pretty well. We got two totems out of it. We were running low on bullets and now we have no moral obligation to defend this town because everyone's dead. Mark my words though, we will get revenge on the pillagers. Let's make our way back home, which is gonna take a while. I'll see you guys once I'm back at base. We have made it back home. Before we get on with the day, let's open our four epic hat grab bags. We got a dragon skull, some sunglasses, a drinking hat, and some more headphones. See, now this is sick. I would wear these for sure. Look at this hat in the inventory. It's so big. The sacred cowboy hat has been returned to its rightful place atop my head, so let's get back to work. I will say though, I definitely have plans to build a bank in this town and display our rarest hats in there. Also, I got this create mod enchantment capacity mixed up with the gun mod enchantment over capacity. So this isn't very useful to me. I will put our most sacred possession, this Pepsi can, atop our crafting table. We will be prepared to defend this with our life. It's absolutely crucial that we craft some more ammo. So let's do that. And we'll also make some more scorch bronze and we'll use that to make some more heavy bullets. We're going to start work building the numerous machines that will go in our factory and for that we'll need andesite alloy there's some not too far down in our mines so we'll grab that if the gravel could not get in the way for once i love how i accidentally pulled out the gun here like i'm gonna shoot the gravel this is what you deserve gravel we have a stack now which should be enough we've also still got this poor zombie villager encased in cobblestone let's make a whole bunch of andesite alloy let's go ahead and replace the floor in our factory and for the floor we'll use good old-fashioned cobblestone now the first thing we need is to set this crusher back up once again a quick disclaimer, I am brand new to this mod, so these machines will be primitive and bad. Please do not spam me in the comments about it. With a small water wheel like this, the crusher should start running, I think. Let's throw in some iron to see. Oh, it's so slow. Look at that. All right, I've tweaked the design, and now the crusher moves slightly faster than an elderly snail. By putting a big gear going into a little one, we can increase the speed of the contraption. It looks slow, but then it speeds up. Now we can use these iron sheets we've just created with some andesite alloy to make a whisk. Then we'll turn this oak log into andesite casing and we combine the whisk, the casing and a cog wheel to make a mixer. We also need to make a basin and then if we place down the blaze burner the basin and the mixer above and we do of course need to power this so we'll rig it up to this water wheel we're gonna need another andesite casing which will turn into a gearbox and then we'll connect it to this like so we'll add in a shaft and then two cog wheels like so we'll swap the little one for a big one in order to make this spin faster apparently this isn't rotating fast enough but i've realized what we need to do in order to get the extra speed from the big and small cog wheel combo Try saying that first try. I bet you can't. Then the cog wheel, the big one that is, has to be diagonal to the small one. So if we place the big one here and then another small cog wheel there. Nope, still not fast enough. Let's rethink this. We'll add another water wheel like so. And then we'll go large wheel, small wheel, large wheel, small wheel. And you can see that this one is turning significantly faster than everything else here. Then we go blaze burner, basin, mixer. And getting this to work might be slightly more annoying than I thought because this gear isn't aligned with this one. Let's throw in a vertical gearbox, then big wheel, small wheel, and now this thing should work. I've been doing some tinkering and I've created this hideous thing. By using a triple big cog, small cog mega combo, we now have an actually fast spinning gear. So in goes the blaze burner. 
in goes the basin, and in goes the mechanical mixer that actually seems to be going somewhat fast now. And now, by fueling the blaze burner with coal like so, we can now mix zinc and copper together to create brass, which is essential for making trains. Ladies and gentlemen, technology! Now, we actually need a fair amount of this stuff, so I'm going to yeet in a bunch of zinc and copper. Look how cool that is, though. Look how fast the whisk is going as well. There's still a lot of steps ahead of us, but getting brass is incredibly important and a huge leap forward. Now, in order to get one of the pieces of machinery required to make one of the parts required to craft a train, we need to make another piece of machinery to craft that first piece of machinery. There's a lot of complicated steps in this mod. We'll use our brass on these stripped oak logs to make brass casing, and we now need to craft rose quartz, which requires nether quartz, obviously, and a bunch of redstone. We have neither of these things. That's the quartz sorted out. And that is the redstone sorted. Plus two diamonds that I ended up finding. Plus a carrot that I got off some random zombie child. So we'll definitely start farming carrots alongside those pumpkins and melons. I really need to actually put some effort into our pumpkin and melon farm. There's just so many things to do. Let's make ourselves a bunch of rose quartz. And we're gonna need a bit of sugar cane for this next step. But thankfully there's some right here. We make some paper. Which we can then turn into red sandpaper. And now we we can use this to refine our rose quartz. We can sand it down. The sandpaper does break, so we'll have to make some more. For the next step, we need to head to the factory to make some iron sheets. Let's just yeet all of this in there. In comparison to the whisk, this thing is so slow. I'm definitely gonna tweak this soon. We then combine our iron sheets with our polished rose quartz to make electron tubes. Yes, I say tube instead of tube because I'm British. Then if we grab ourselves a bit of wood, we turn all of these into brass casings. Then we combine the electron tubes, the brass casing, and some crafting tables in order to make mechanical crafters. And we need 21 of these. And that's because this is the recipe for the next crucial machine part that we need, the crushing wheels. This is obviously not going to fit on a regular crafting table. Alright, now let's get this next machine set up. There's been an IRL two-day gap in the recording because I am unfortunately ill, but I still want to get this video out for you guys. That's why I might sound a bit different. Let's get all of these mechanical crafters placed down. If we have a look at the little black arrows on these things, we need these bottom two to point into this middle one. And we can fix that with a certain item. We can use these golden sheets combined with a cogwheel combined with a stick to make a wrench. And what this allows us to do is tweak certain machines like this one. Not like that. Like this. There we go. So now those are pointing into this one. Our mega crafting grid is assembled. We just need to power it. We're running low on wood once again again, so excuse me for a second. We need three big cog wheels and three little cog wheels. We also need some andesite casing, which we will use to make some gearboxes. And finally, we need three large water wheels. This crafting machine requires a ton of power, which is why we need so many water wheels. I have actually already planned out the design for this in creative, and it actually properly works, so there'll be no more messing around like with that mixer over there. Now we just need to clear a bit of space for our water wheels. We place them down like so and then we get them powered with some water. And there we are. Our giant crafty menu is up and running. I am getting some pretty significant lag in here, so I've added some dispensers with water so that we only turn on these machines when we need them. Fellas, fellas, please stop striking. I'll raise your salaries by three cents each. Doesn't that sound great? We can work this out, guys. We can work this out. And my workers are dead. Right, let's make ourselves a pair of crushing wheels. We put granite in the middle, wood planks around it, and then we fill the rest of the spaces up with andesite alloy. Then we switch the machine on. And now look at that. All of the pieces are combining together. There they go. And they get all squeezed together and compressed and get turned into crushing wheels. Now we actually have to be pretty careful with these crushing wheels because if we fall into them, it's an instant death. They are now spinning, which is very nice. But yeah, as I was saying, these things are very dangerous. So there has to be some safety precautions. There's going to be a small platform where we go up to throw things into the crushing wheels. And look at that. This guy's come up to try and push me into the crushing wheel. Let's see if we can do a little experiment with him. Go in, go in, and goodbye, son. <laughs> I told you guys, they're very dangerous. Can you guys go away, please? Anyway, as that fella just demonstrated, safety precautions are very important. I can't believe he just slipped and fell in like that. That's a really unfortunate workplace accident that had nothing to do with me. This place is definitely starting to feel like a proper factory now, which is nice. The reason we've made these crushing wheels is because they give us the ability to make powdered obsidian. It takes a very long time for this stuff to get crushed, but there it is, powdered obsidian. We are now just two machines away from 
from being able to create our very own trains. I think it's about time we upgraded our weapons and gear though. First of all, let's make ourselves a flamethrower, a very popular weapon in the Wild West times. The ammo for this thing requires encased fire, and we also need some netherite scraps in order to make this SMG, so we're going to be heading to the nether. However, we are level 47. I think it's about time we got some enchantments done. I'm going to build a general goods store with a dedicated enchanting area, and I'm not going to waste your time. I'm just going to do this. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to present the town's goods store. The banners kind of look like goose, but that is a D, trust me. Inside, we've got the enchantment table set up where we can get level 30 enchants, and we've also got some of the heads that I stole from the bandit towers. I went a little bit overboard with the building. I actually went to the bandit camp over there in order to steal all of their spruce wood from the floor. We've got this small villager house currently unoccupied. I think it's quite nice. We've also got some cacti and this nice path. I think it's all coming together quite nicely. Let's go ahead and craft ourselves some new gear, as well as an anvil, because it is time to finally do some enchanting. 48 levels is way too much. We've got these protection four boots and feather falling four, so we just need to try and get depth strider on this unenchanted pair. And there it is right away. You love to see it. And they come with prop four and unbreaking three as a bonus. Lovely. We do also need to try and get a better helmet. We could try for this unbreaking three. Let's do it. And it's wonderful, folks. We'll take that. Let's grab fire aspect two on our sword. Ah, oh, it has smite. Yuck. We'll definitely grab efficiency four on the pickaxe. And it comes with unbreaking. Thank you, enchanted table. There's a sweeping edge enchantment. I guess we go for it. Uh, oh, it has knockback. See, the most we're being offered in the enchantment table is sharpness three. That's it. We have a sharpness four book. We could definitely get sharpness five if we get lucky. Do we gamble it all on this fire aspect two? Of course we do. Yes! Yes! It worked out perfectly. We'll put feather falling on our boots. We'll combine these two leggings together to get prop four. We'll combine these two chest plates together to get prop four. And even though it's only five levels, we've unfortunately come up short for getting a sharpness five sword. I also didn't have enough levels to enchant our guns. Let's make some more bullets. And now let's head to the nether in order to get the blaze powder to power up our flamethrower. This new pickaxe is so much better. We've got 30 now, which should last us a decent amount of time. There's so many wither skirtons here, it's kind of insane. Still have not gotten a wither skull yet though, even with the four leaf clover trinket. I also opened some epic hat grab bags and look what I got. I know I said the cowboy hat was never leaving, but I think it's time. The RGB cowboy hat has now been equipped. This looks sick. You've done a great service, cowboy hat. Enjoy your retirement. We also got a baby dolphin hat and also this purple flames hat. But now, ladies and gentlemen, with blaze powder and iron ingots, we can create the encased fire ammo. Let's load this bad boy up. Fire! <laughs> This is so sick. It's really expensive to shoot, though. We are now a flamethrower-wielding RGB hat-wearing cowboy. Is that not awesome? As fun as it is, I'm going to have to stop firing this thing because my wallet basically bursts into tears every time I do. We now need to head over to the bandit towers in order to steal a bunch of wool to use for beds in order to find netherite. I shouldn't waste it, but this also seems like a great opportunity to test out the flamethrower. Oh my god. This thing is insane. I was expecting it to be good, but not not that good. We've got a fair few stacks of wool now, so let's get going. Let's go ahead and chop some wood from our new and improved tree farm. I put slabs above all the trees to stop those stupid giant trees from ever growing ever again. Let's head on back into the nether. We might as well just dig down right next to the portal. We've reached Y13 and somehow found our way into a nether mineshaft. In all honesty, this isn't very helpful because ancient debris can't spawn exposed to air, so none of these tunnels are particularly helpful. I'm gonna mine away from that place. We have found a minecart chest though and you know what i'll take this nether wart we actually do need that later i was mining around trying to look for the edge of a chunk border and i've already found some debris and it's a three vein no way most of you probably know this but some of you might not only one ancient debris can spawn per chunk so if you mine along a chunk border you're more likely to find extra netherite let's turn off the borders and now we make ourselves a few beds all right let's see the netherite i mean that was kind of hopeful it's time for a super intense bed mining montage you ready? Let's go. Oh my god. What? I'm so dumb. How did I manage that? That was not what I wanted to do. Funny enough, that actually was our last bed, and we found some ancient debris with it. Imagine if I didn't have a totem there. We've managed to find 27 ancient debris, which is really good. Get out the way, small child. We've got enough ancient debris to both make the Vidas SMG and to also fully kit out our armor. Oh, and there's some more here. And there's some more here. How did I miss all this? 30 ancient debris from three stacks of beds is 
easily my luckiest ancient debris mining session ever. Aside from the part where I nearly blew myself to pieces. Let's get out of here. Let's get this stuff smelted. And we'll also open this epic hat grab bag, which gave us a potato hat. There are zero thoughts going on in that face of his. Look, he's a mini potato buddy on our head. That is amazing. Can we display potato on this armor stand? Please say we can. No, it doesn't work, potato. No. We'll put him in the chest for now. And we'll also grab our spare totem. Let's craft ourselves some netherite ingots. And we'll go ahead and convert our armor. We'll also use the netherite ingot from that treasure bastion to upgrade our sword. We need a few crimson planks for this SMG. The map showed me that just through this warped forest is a small patch of crimson. There it is. Why am I in a foot race with this enderman? Stop it. You're not winning. I'm outpacing you. No. Now we climb up quickly. I am the supreme king of the 100 meter sprint. And now using 16 scorched bronze ingots, 8 crimson planks, and 8 netherite scraps, we can assemble the Vidas SMG. Look at that. It's a pretty noisy gun though. So using 5 tin bronze ingots and a sponge I got from one of the chests in the bandit camp while I was stealing their spruce wood, we can make an advanced silencer. We'll attach the silencer and a tactical grip. This thing requires pig rounds, which you need hell gunpowder to craft. Not only does it have an awesome name, it's also very cheap to craft, which is nice. We combine hell gunpowder with a blaze rod and three gold ingots to make the pig rounds. Now our rifle has a mag size of eight and reloads one bullet at a time. The Vidas SMG has a mag size of 28. And if you want to see the reload... That's it. We just loaded 28 rounds in one second. This is the gun that's going to allow us to take on the highest level modded raids. Let's give it a quick test. Dead. It sounds so sick as well. The rapid fire nature is going to be great for keeping control of the large crowds of pillagers. We can use our flamethrower to set them on fire and our rifle to pick off strong enemies in the distance. We have become a pretty powerful sheriff. I forgot to say I've stopped using the shotgun because it just doesn't feel very powerful. The frontier sidearm just completely completely outclasses it in DPS. The main thing we need to do before day 100 is to get a train up and running, to enchant some of our guns, and to take on a max level modded raid. So let's get to work on the final steps to make a train. First, we must craft a deployer. Then we must make a depot. Then we make a chute. And finally, a barrel. Wait, what? And finally, a barrel. What? And then we must craft a barrel, finally. Hey, give me my lawn back. Come here. That is not your sandy lawn. Give it back. And there's a skeleton in the melon farm. 360. Oh, I'm nice with it. And he dropped an epic hat grab bag. We got another potion bottle. I also definitely should have put a fence around this farm because the tumbleweeds are actually damaging the crops. I don't know why they're still here because the dirt has gone back to normal, but it's broken. I'm pretty sure once we break the pumpkins, these glitch out. Okay, well, this looks really weird, but they're still working kind of, but it looks really ugly. However, if you place a block next to them, they break. So there must be something wrong. That doesn't happen with the ordinary stems. Look, it's a never ending list of things to do. We're going to siphon some power off from our giant water wheels. We place down our deployer, then above it we add the chute and a barrel. We don't want the water wheels getting overstressed by powering too many machines at once, so we'll remove this small cog for now. We'll turn them on to check it's all working. Lovely. Then we remove this chute for a second. We make ourselves a gold sheet. We place that on our depot. Then we place down cog wheels, large cog wheels, and iron nuggets like this five times in a row. What's going to happen is all of these items are going to be applied to the gold sheet in this order. We'll add the chute back in. Unfortunately, the plan completely failed. I thought it would apply the items one by one, but it applied them all at once, giving us just some junk. Actually, wait, I believe this item is savable. What we're trying to make here is a precision mechanism, which is incredibly important for one of the final machines we need to make a train. I'm going to add everything one by one, and hopefully everything works out. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the precision mechanism. This item allows us to craft two crucial things, the train controls and the rotation speed controller. We need to mix ourselves some more brass real quick. How many times do I have to say it? Get out of my factory. Our blaze burner needs some more fuel, so let's get him sorted out. And now this should start mixing. Lovely. We'll make a brass casing. And then we craft ourselves the rotation speed controller. We need this for the second to last machine we need for the trains. That's right, we're two machines away from our very own train. But this allows us to control the speed that our next contraption rotates at, which is really useful because we're starting to run out of space for the small gear, big gear combo. We need to get ourselves some copper sheets. Then we can make ourselves some fluid pipes. I'm getting bit by a spider. Get out of here. We then make ourselves a fluid tank, a mechanical pump. We then make ourselves some copper casing and then combining it with a piece of dried kelp, we can make ourselves a spout. Then we place down the spout, the pump, 
We whack the pump with our wrench to get it facing the right way. And then we place down the tank. Wait, no, I'm wrong. This fluid tank is useless. We don't need it. We instead must make the item drain. We put that there. Then we get a cog facing into the pump. We then place down a vertical gearbox, a shaft, and another vertical gearbox gearbox like so. Then we place down our rotation speed controller and set that pretty high. If you set it too high, it tends to overload the machine. So we'll go like 200. There we go. Then we shoot this creeper. That's not part of the plan. We put in some water to make this thing work. My bad, everyone. It turns out you need to put a large gear into the top of the rotation speed controller to actually control the speed of anything. This is what it looks like at max speed, by the way. Pretty stupid. We'll keep it spinning at 100 for now. We'll put a gearbox behind this. Gearbox connected to this. Then we place down a big cogwheel and a small cogwheel. Oh, it's going too fast now. The reason why it froze there is because it's going so fast, it's overstressing the machine. Let's crank this way down. And now this should work. It's still overstressed. The highest RPM we can run our speed controller at is actually 32. I don't think it was even necessary to keep this thing any higher and the machine breaks. But now this is another contraption finished. All we need is lava and powdered obsidian. We place our powdered obsidian on the depot. We then fill the fluid tank up with lava. And now the lava is being spouted onto our powdered obsidian. We've got ourselves two unprocessed obsidian sheets. Now we simply throw it in the press and then we throw it in again. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what we've been working towards the entire video. This right here is the sturdy sheet. And by applying it to brass casings, we can make train casings. That's right. This is what we've been working towards. This is the bit that makes the train go. Let's process our other sheet real quick. The reason why this is the second to last machine is because we need to create a machine that will make train tracks for us. Don't worry, it's very simple. We'll use this water wheel for power. We'll give it some water to work with. Then we put down a rotation speed controller. We'll chuck in a large cogwheel. This machine should be able to handle higher speeds. We place down a small cogwheel. Oh wait, I forgot that's going to spin extra fast because of the big one. Let me turn this down a bit. We'll place down another cogwheel. Then we'll put a shaft here and a shaft here. We'll convert them into a conveyor belt like that. If only we could increase our Minecraft character's fitness level. This would make for a great treadmill. This is why I beat that Enderman in that 100 meter race because even when I'm in my factory, I'm still exercising. I should probably stop exercising on the machines before OSHA gets involved. We'll place a chest here. Then we put a funnel on it. We then place a chest at the end with the same thing. Then we place two deployers as well as a mechanical press. Then we simply have to get all of these moving. The machine can't be run any faster than this or it gets overstressed. It's because we only have this one tiny water wheel powering the whole thing. I'm going to move everything and make some adjustments. I'll be right back. All right, I've upgraded from one tiny water wheel to two ginormous ones and now the machine is running wonderfully. Allow me to give you a quick demonstration of this marvelous contraption. We put an iron nugget in both of these deployers like so. Then we put an andesite slab in this chest. The machine I was going to show you sucked and didn't work properly. This is the finished version. We put iron nuggets in these deployers like so. We chuck an andesite slab in this chest up here. It goes on the conveyor belt. Nugget supplied. Smash. Ladies and gentlemen, we have train track. We have now built every single machine we need in order to make a train. Let's go ahead and turn these brass casings into train casings using the sturdy sheets. Then we can use one of those train casings to craft the train controls. And we can also make some train stations. Now all we need to do is make a ton of train tracks, so I will be right back. It's really cool watching this machine do its thing though. This is easily my favorite one. And while all that's going on in there, I'm gonna make the train station. Because we have these train station blocks, but they just let us tell the game where a train can be built. This isn't an actual train station, obviously. I want to set up a train line that takes us up across here. We'll pass by the bandit towers for a bit of sightseeing. Then you'll go around this big hill like this, and then you'll loop all the way back around and you come back to the town. We're gonna have to build a man-made hill here because trains don't do so well with slopes and the terrain over there is a bit higher. I'll be right back when this hill is done to start working on the station itself. Here is the giant sandy mound that our train station will rest atop. I've marked it all out in dirt as you can see. This will be the ticket booth, then we can have some kind of cafe or something here, and then this will be the platform. However, before we build this thing, we need to refresh our dark oak supplies. There's not a lot of dark oak left in the village we ransacked earlier, so so we're gonna have to find a different one. Thankfully, I've spotted another one on the map, and it's about a thousand blocks away. We've got our revolver with us in case we need to threaten any villagers. Also, our cooked pork ran out, so I've been living off of melons. It's not a very glamorous life. Watch this minecart chest have a god apple. Ready? Bang. Imagine.
one. We do actually need these glow berries though, so that's useful. The village isn't that far off from the bandit camp. I believe the camp's up there somewhere, so maybe on our way back, we'll stop off and farm some XP. Since those wither skeletons riding hoglins are great for getting loads of levels, and I really want to put some enchantments on our guns. I'm also going to pick up any cactus I see on the way, because it's good for decorating the town with. There it is! That glorious dark oak wood shall be ours! I'm like a wild west Robin Hood. I steal from the poor to give to the rich. Me. This place is massive as well. This place almost looks like a hotel of sorts. Hello, Emma. Shouldn't there be two M's? I mean, whatever. Anyway, can I please stay in your hotel? Okay, thanks, bye. Take this piece of rotten flesh as payment. You're welcome. We've got a nice room in here. It's got a nice high ceiling, a royal purple bed, a chest to store our stuff in, or take the stuff that's already in it. Not that we really need any of it. And it's even got some lovely windows where you can look out at all the horrible monsters ruining the view. Someone stayed in your hotel for free last night. That's very concerning. I'll be sure to keep an eye out for him. What is going on in this village? Let's get to stripping the wood from these people's homes. Imagine working for years of your life. You finally get a down payment on your house and then the second day of living there, some random guy comes along and yoinks half the building. I tell you what, I definitely wouldn't want that to happen to me. <laughs> get it? Because wood wouldn't. I'm stealing wood. I was born with a walnut-sized brain. What do you want, rattlesnake? I'd stop hissing at me if I were you. I'd stop that. You got till the count of three. One, two, I'm bored. As the sheriff of a neighboring town, I hear sentence you to the afterlife. Let that there be a lesson to you, partner. We'll have to keep an eye out for the guy that keeps breaking into Emma's hotel. It's really unfortunate that that's happening. Oh, wait, I recognize this village. We came by it at the very start of the 100 days. Ah, yes, the bow. Famously a much stronger and more powerful weapon than the gun. Back at the start of this video, I did not have such an insane drive to steal all the dark oak wood in the world. How times change. I'm just gonna focus on collecting dark oak wood. I'll see you guys soon. We've got a whole load of dark oak logs now, so we should be good. I did think, though, it would be pretty fun if we tamed a cat before we left this village. Our town could definitely use a few pets. Watch me catch a mending book first try. Ready? There's the mending book. Oh, but here's the mending book. Boom. Oh, so that's right. No, well, at least we're getting fish to tame the cat, which is what we came here for. Very random, but I rewatched Cars this morning, and in my opinion, Cars is a great movie. I will die on that hill. I love that film. Although the second one was bizarre and sucked, and the third is just annoying because Lightning McQueen loses. Look at this child. He probably likes Cars 3, and that's why he's getting deleted. I've actually run out of melons, so instead of fishing in order to tame a cat, I'm gonna need to fish in order to feed myself. Now, going back to Cars... <laughs> <laughs> Is the movie as well-themed and unique as Ratatouille? Not really, but do I prefer it? absolutely. Sue me. Jumping from side to side while I wait for the fish to spawn. We've got ourselves 15 raw cod. Hopefully the cat doesn't eat too much of this. Now we've got to track this cat down. I really hope it didn't go into the abandoned mineshaft. I'm also half hunger, so hopefully we find it sooner rather than later. I can't even sprint anymore. Let's rob some beetroot from this farm. Hooray, half a point of hunger that's going to disappear in like two seconds. Where is this cat? Let's actually cook some of this fish in the blacksmith. It's going to be so annoying to try and find this cat otherwise. There's just a random music disc lying here. Thanks, I guess. Look at that giant underground lake. That looks sick. I found a cat. It's not the same cat I originally saw, but it's good enough for me. Come here. I have yummy fish. Come here. Come here now. Come here right now. Here we go. Here we go. Boom, boom. There we go. We've got ourselves a cat. For any longtime viewers, it's the same breed as Moon from my 1000 Days series. That's pretty cool. I'm not the best at pet names, so I made a community post asking people to comment, and I would name the cat after one random person who did. The comment I decided to go with was from Zero the Weirdo. Now the cat's full government name is Zero the Weirdo, but we'll call it Zero for short. I really hope you don't fall down a giant pit because that would be a bit awkward. Real quick, a massive thank you to everyone that commented on the post. I've read all the comments and there were some really, really lovely ones. We're making our way over to this bandit camp in order to get ourselves a few XP levels. I'm also finally starting to recover from my cold, which is very nice. We have now arrived at our destination. Zero is going to be on stage by over here. I do not want to involve you in all the fighting. Come on, show me the money. Where are the hoglins? There we go. That's what I wanted to see. It never gets old seeing them get affected by the jump boost. Jump up in the air. Do it. Jump up. Jump up. Oh, well, we've been farming all night and left quite the trail of destruction. However, we do now have almost two and a half stacks of cooked pork chops. Come on, Zero. Let's go home. We're also now at level 33, which will allow us to enchant two of our guns at max level 30. What? What 
are you doing in here? Leave immediately. We'll go ahead and enchant our Vidas SMG with what looks like a really good enchantment, puncturing four. And it also has a light weight, which probably means we can aim down sight faster. Yes. We can also stray faster while using it, which is really useful. And of course, we'll enchant the old reliable, the LM Spear Iron Port. We'll grab over capacity three. Why not? And it has fire starter, which I assume means it sets enemies on fire. This thing went from being able to hold eight bullets to being able to hold 20. We'll also put sharpness five on our sword and we'll also set up the name tag for zero the cat. And there we go. Guys, I was just messing around with our guns. Listen to how the iron port sounds now. Oh, that is powerful. This thing feels mighty. Oh, hello there, creeper. Are you enjoying this tree farm? Boom. Nice try, mate. Oh, is that another creeper? Do you think you're going to get a chance to blow up? Oh, that's really cute. Boom. That was actually way too close. Anyway, we need to collect some wood because we've got a train station to build. I promise you all, it is not long at all now until you can see a working Minecraft train. We're going to use oak logs for our train station. We'll get the walls filled in with some dark oak wood. We'll place down some composters along the top like usual. Then we'll add a few more. Then we'll use some stairs and a trap door in order to turn this into an arch. And we'll do the same over here. We'll put stairs on the edge of the platform like this. Then we'll fill in the platform. We'll put some cobblestone walls at the edges and then some dark oak fences. And all we have left now is to add in the roof and a few minor details. Let's get this roof placed down. I've just realized I've already done it wrong because right now this isn't going to connect to the posts. Once again, I find myself at the tree farm. We'll use some oak slabs for the roof like so, as well as some stairs. And then at the top here, this is where the big sign's going to go that will say station. Let's also go ahead and put a roof on the platform. This place is coming along really well. We'll go ahead and spell out station up here like so. That looks very nice. We'll go ahead and throw a few windows on this place. This room here is going to be a ticket office, and I thought it'd be really fun if we had Zero in here as our ticket officer. Come on, Zero. You've got a new job. Come on. Just come up through here. Yes. Yes. Now we sit you down, and then we just give you a little nudge like that. That should be perfect. Oh, the floating was not something I had in mind. We use crafting tables to represent boxes instead. All right, come on, buddy. We should have solved your floating issues now. There we go. That's perfect. If you could turn around, though, that would be great. There we go. Perfect. Look at that. We've got our very own ticket officer. This room here is going to be a tiny little cafe. We'll add in a few little stools like so, as well as a small shelf. And finally, we'll add a central lantern. I actually forgot to do that in here. Sorry about that, Zero. Now that we've built the train station, all that we need are the blocks to build our train with. We need lots of sturdy sheets for train casings. We need some light blue concrete. We need some black dye. Don't worry, the train isn't actually going to crush anyone. It's for a different reason. We need to mix some copper and zinc together to get brass, which we'll use to create a flywheel. We also need some red nether bricks, some blackstone, and the final thing that we need is some red wool. Why, hello there, skeleton. Goodbye. This gun is so ridiculous ridiculously good now. We're attracting somewhat of a crowd. I can't say no to some free XP. Oh no, why'd you spawn on the outside? Please, get away. I'm gonna leave now. Let's get some tracks laid down because it is finally time for us to build our train. We should have all of the materials that we need now. We do need to build a big old bridge so that we can connect to that hill over there. So I'm gonna get that done right now. And the other reason why this bridge needs to be made is because we need a lot of space in order to build the train and its carriages. Now what we should should be able to do is curve the track along this. Or at least I could if I wasn't getting attacked by stupid zombies. I mean, it works. It wasn't exactly what I had in mind though. I've done my best to fix the curve. It's kind of hard when you only have blocks and it's not a very large area, so you can't smooth it out much. I've done an okay job, I think. I could detail the bridge, but we are starting to close in on day 100, so we just don't have the time. We'll place down our train station block. We'll make ourselves some brass casing, and then we'll turn all that into train casing. And then in our train station, we'll start the process of making a train. We apply the train casing. Oh, look at that. The first piece of the train. Then we place the next one here. Then we'll connect these up with train casings. This is just for decoration. We'll place some at the back and one at the front. As it is right now, the train is going to clip into the roof of the station. So I got to adjust that real quick. Now back to the train, we'll add some red nether brick slabs and some red nether brick stairs along the front. As a little kid, I was really into 
to train, so getting to build my very own one in a video game is like my inner child's greatest dream come true. We'll use these black valves to add the little bumper bits on the front and back to stop the trains from smashing into each other. We'll build up the base using our blue concrete. Due to a slight miscalculation, I need to drop the track down by one block, so bear with me a second. This shouldn't take particularly long. The track has now been successfully lowered. You, my good sir, need to stay off the tracks. This is a very dangerous area for a little turtle like yourself. Also, something I forgot to do the first time we were building this is to change these uh, bogies, that's what they're called, to this type. It doesn't make any difference to the train's performance, I just think it looks cooler. We can now resume progress on our train. We'll place down some crushing wheels to represent the steam engine part, and we'll cap that off with a flywheel. We'll then add some decoration to the sides with some red carpet. We'll throw in a little chute at the front like so to act as the chimney, I think. I don't know train terms. In between the slabs, we'll use some shafts and then some metal brackets for some extra detail. We'll also add some in on the sides. There's actually a steam whistle you can make, but it only works if it's attached to a fluid tank. Whoops, I don't want to put it there. I want to put it there. And then we attach the steam whistle. We'll use these really cool glass trap doors to make the windows at the front. We'll make a few more train casings and we'll use them to make some train trap doors. We'll put those on the sides and we'll use them at the back here as well to create a little area where coal would be stored for extra fuel. We haven't got any coal blocks though. I'm just going to use some blackstone. We've completely run out of train casings unfortunately and we need obsidian to make more so I'm off to the mines. And you zombie are off to the grave. Oh I hit that. I'm insane. And now he has a friend to join him. All this time and I still haven't fixed this staircase. I love mining obsidian said no one ever. And it also doesn't help when it falls in the lava. I've now collected 33 obsidian, which should definitely be enough for all our train casing needs. Wow, zombie, a spade versus a gun. That is certainly an interesting idea. You know, no, I think that's actually really clever. I can really see how that has a chance against a gun. Nice try. Oh, he actually lived. What? <laughs> Relax. Lesson learned. Do not insult zombies carrying shovels. They will embarrass you. We do have to process all this obsidian, though, which is never fun. We're also going to need a ton of lava to get all of this turned into sturdy sheets. Look how many there are. This should be the last of the unprocessed sturdy sheets. And we now have ourselves 33 sturdy sheets, as well as all of our train tracks that I've been preparing. We now need some more logs to create brass casings to turn into train casings. The grind never ends. Brass casings acquired. This is very satisfying to do. And train casings acquired. Remember when we were struggling to just make one of these? Please excuse the absolutely horrendous render distance. The create mod is really starting to like my game out now. It's kind of unwatchable past like eight chunks. Let's make ourselves some train doors. Now we place the train doors on and these have such a nice animation. Then we just chuck on the roof. Oh no, raiders have shown up at the town. Whatever shall I do? I think I'll do this. <laughs> nice one boys. You're really good at this. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, behold, Thomas the Tank Engine. I'm so proud of how this turned out. I've just realized I've forgotten two very important things. The train controls, those are pretty key, and a little seat for us to sit on while we drive the train. Remember when I said a very long time ago that these slime balls will come in handy? Now is that time, because we can use them in order to make super glue. You might be thinking, is he really going to use super glue to hold his train together? The answer is yes. Yes, I am. We've got it all selected, so now we just confirm it. Then we remove these temporary blocks. I've just realized I missed these two valves at the back. Let me grab them. What this does is it sticks all the blocks together and it tells the game this is all one big connected train. Move all of these blocks at once. The last things we have to do before we can pilot Thomas the Tank Engine, the great steam train, is to build more than three centimeters of track and also to give him some passenger cars. I got the layout and structure of these passenger cars from this video by Dark Mode, so shout out to him for that. I'll leave a link to his video in the description below. We have to temporarily remove move some of the train station. Otherwise, when we super glue the carriages together, then the game's going to think part of the station is part of our train. I don't know if you've ever seen a train with a train station melded to it. Probably not, but trust me, it will not be pretty. The factory's lag is starting to become a problem I can't ignore anymore. Even with a super low render distance, I'm not even hitting 60 FPS while I'm in the town. And the closer I get, the worse the lag gets. For the sake of this video being watchable and not a blurry, stuttery mess, I'm going to open 
open the game to land and world edit this a few chunks away. I'm sorry I have to do this. I hope you guys understand. We'll go ahead and chuck it down out here. Goodbye, lag factory. It looks like it dropped these water wheels. I will, of course, delete those because they're technically duplicated. I'm sorry that had to be done, but now the game is buttery smooth again. Thank the Lord. I was getting so sick and tired of all the lag. Now let's get on with building our passenger cars. Put my lawn down. Every time I tell him, he just comes back and does it again. We'll use some metal brackets at the front of the carriage here. We'll put some doors on the front here. Then we'll add in some little seats because these are going to be the little cabins. And in order to create the walls of these passenger cars, we'll use trap doors. Because if we were to have solid blocks on either side, we would only have one block of space in the carriage, which would suck. Once again, these glass trap doors come in incredibly useful. And now we get to do the fun part of flipping all of these trap doors up. This is so satisfying. We've also got to put trap doors on the inside to give these cabins some privacy. The door goes there. And look at that. It slides open, allows us in, and we've got a pretty spacious cabin in here. All that's left now is the other side of the carriage and the roof. All right, this side is now done. I'm getting invaded by these little guys. This is some kind of different breed. And there's another one over here with a torch in his body. Um... I'm not going to ask. And there's another one here. What's going on? And another one there. We're under attack, ladies and gentlemen. We are under attack. I do want to use some smooth sandstone for the roof, which is a little bit of a pain. Foolish rapscallion engaging me in aquatic combat. Do you know who I am, sir? Forgot we're in the Wild West. I'll make sure to do the cowboy accent next time. I love how I said I was going to do something with this island, and it's completely bare. Let's collect ourselves a bit more andesite, and we'll turn that andesite into layered andesite. Now we'll make the slabs with our smooth sandstone, and now let's put the roof on this thing. The layered andesite goes in at the top. And now we just need to super glue it all together. This train is looking absolutely incredible. All I have left to do now is to make an exact identical copy of this carriage. Now we just need to super glue this together. We'll also add some lanterns inside the carriages because I would not want to get a train ticket only to discover there was a creeper sat in my seat. All right, that's all done. And now for the grand reveal, the glorious, the incredible, the show-stopping Mosey Express. Also, why are you here? Go away. Two luxurious carriages furnished with the finest dark oak, all the while pulled by Thomas the Tank Engine. I'm sure you're all thinking the same thing as me, which is when are we going to be driving this thing? The answer is very, very soon. Let's click this button. Assemble train. The Mosey Express. Express. All that's left to do now is lay down a full rail line, and with our factory, getting enough train track is not a problem. Getting enough FPS is a bit of a problem, though. Since train tracks only cost two iron nuggets and a slab, they are very, very, very cheap to make more of. I've got so much of this stuff to place, it is time for a super awesome train track placing montage. That took absolutely forever. But look at this glorious railway circuit we have now. This took so long to make. You have waited more than long enough. It is time for us to drive our train. Ladies and gentlemen, the Mosey Express is now departing. This is genuinely one of the coolest things I have ever seen in Minecraft. There's the Bandit Towers. We're just going past that now. We're driving our very own train. This is just insane. We're now approaching the station. And when when we arrive back at the station, all the doors on the carriages automatically open, ready to accept new passengers. And what if I told you we could actually get someone to drive the train for us? Come on, Zero. Follow me. There we go. Zero has now been placed on the seat. Now we simply assign you this train schedule here. Look at that. You get a little hat as well. One second. Just need to make a few amendments to the schedule because I'm an idiot. If we go ahead and give this schedule to Zero and then we make our way inside a carriage, we'll get ourselves situated in this lovely first class cabin and we're off we're leaving the station our train is being driven by a cat there's the bandit towers we're just passing them now the game is a bit laggy it's a bit glitchy but you know still pretty cool we're experiencing some stormy skies we have stopped at a station temporarily i'm gonna shoot this guy who's trying to shoot me in the face look at this we are getting treated to a first class trip around this world all from the comfort of this cabin we can walk around while the train is moving but it's it's a 
little bit buggy. I am in the wall. I've glitched into the next cabin. We have arrived back at our very own station. And soon this train will leave. I'm sorry for the lag, by the way. <laughs> and it's off again. See you later, Zero. The create mod is so cool. We can see the train arriving from our house. It adds so much life to the town to have a train arriving and leaving. Goodbye. Again, the final thing for us to do in this video is take on a max level modded raid, which means we need ammo for all of these guns. We have plenty of gunpowder, but need lots and lots of blaze powder. So I'll see you guys soon. I could show you all this grinding footage, but let's be honest, it's incredibly boring. Now we can assemble a whole bunch of pig rounds. I've been growing a whole bunch of fungus in the backyard. Not sure how legal that is. We'll also make ourselves some encased fire, as well as some scorched big bullets. And finally, we'll make ourselves some good old fashioned heavy bullets. Let's also make ourselves some gapples. Before we go, we might as well enchant our other guns now that we have levels and fire starter on a flamethrower not very useful. I guess on the revolver it could work. And we got trigger finger too, which must make it shoot faster. Look at this. <laughs> this is rapid. Lightweight on the flamethrower would be pretty useful. Let's grab that. And it got fire starter anyway, of course. Actually, no, this is really cool. With the fire starter enchantment, the flamethrower will actually set blocks on fire. It didn't do that before. I am definitely going to accidentally burn down the village we'll be defending with this. We are now armed to the teeth with all manner of insane weapons. Let's go ahead and do this raid. I know originally the plan was to do it at our own base but unfortunately i just didn't have time to get villagers and defend it all we're also not going to start the raid at this village because in a 200 days i would love to grab the villagers from here and make them work in our town over there we are going to make our way over to this pillager outpost over here and there's a village right next to it although i'm going in the wrong direction and i forgot our boat so that's great there's the pillager outpost we're closing in on it <gasps> Oh, let's set this iron golem free. He can help us out. And we need to get up to Bad Omen 5, so this might take a while. Why is the captain over there? No matter, we can just snipe him. That didn't... Oh, there we go. Now he's dead. And I didn't get Bad Omen from that. You know what would be smart, actually? Before we go and start the raid at this village, let's get some villagers and box them in so they can't die. It's not exactly a foolproof plan, obviously. Vexes can still slip in and get them, but this should hopefully prevent us from failing the raid. Nobody panic. I'm imprisoning you for a good cause. Why is everyone staring at me like I'm doing something bad? I mean, I am, but you could be a bit less judgmental about it. I think we've got five villagers sealed in in this terracotta blob. Now we just wait for night for everyone else to go back to their houses and we'll block them in inside those. I'm also going to go ahead and connect a bunch of these buildings up, which should give us a lot of movement options while we're fighting the raid. We should have a pretty wide range of area to work with now. I've now run out of blocks, so I'm going to have to collect some more real quick. Every door we see, we're going to block off. No freedom allowed. You'll thank me for this later, villagers. Between you and me, uh, I'm not sure if you're gonna make it through tomorrow. Don't worry about it. Come on, Martin, get into prison. I mean, your house. You guys are underground, which is incredibly useful. You're probably gonna be the last resort if it all goes wrong. Don't die, Wes. I believe in you. Everybody should be sealed in their homes now, and anyone that's not will perish. Let's get ourselves Bad Omen 5. This outpost really needs an elevator or something. Give me Bad Omen. Thank you. All the memories are coming back now. This was the very first village we spawned next to. We climbed up this hill and the pillagers were stalking us. Then we fought some skeletons in this mineshaft. I remember it all. I shouldn't, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Get off the cliff. Get off the cliff. Goodbye. And he lived, of course. I don't even think iron golems take full damage. You giant four-headed raiders better come out this outpost right now before I lose my temper. There's just zero captains spawning right now. I'm gonna collect some blocks and try increase the spawn area. That might help. I don't want you. I I want a captain. Did you really just miss that? This place is allergic to spawning anything other than peasants. How did he live that? Oh, take that. I can't be bothered. Spawn a captain. This game actually just wants me to suffer. I'm going to light this area up below the plateau in case that's what's causing no pillagers to spawn because there are a lot of mobs here. I hate pillagers. I hate them so much. I was just about to complain about not getting a captain. Finally, there's the second one. Some real progress at last. What I was going to say was that I'm going to go all out out in flattening the area around the outpost in the hopes that it increases the spawns for the captains. You are not a captain, you are a peasant. My man's put himself in the cage. There's our third captain, let's go. The great spawning plateau is making some progress. There is a fair bit of mob activity under the plateau, so I'm gonna sort that out again. I think I went maybe a little bit overboard on it, but it's fine. The sooner it gets us the last two raid captains, the better. And you, sir, while you may have a shiny crossbow, are not a raid captain. And neither are you. Our fourth raid captain. 
There he is. I didn't want to shoot him because remember when I shot that raid captain that was out near the village and I didn't get bad omen for some reason? I have been waiting way too long to miss out on another pillager captain. There he is, the fifth one. Let's go. Oh my days. This took so much longer than it should have done. It is time for the level five maxed out insanely hard raid to begin. Let's do this. It's wave one and there's a boss bar on my screen. Also that ravager spawned in a hill. <laughs> Unlucky mate. Let's get to sniping. Please die. There we go. That's that guy taken care of. We'll shoot him. I'm already getting attacked by Vex. Not what you want. Oh, that's that guy. That's the boss. Wait, no, it isn't. This is the boss. That's not the boss either. All these guys look like bosses. He was shooting with the skulls and that's not the boss. There's an evoker. Die. Get out of here. No, 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 no. Chill. Ooh. The boss's health bar is going down. I think he's getting deleted by an iron golem. He's dead. Oh my god. Oh, no, 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 no. That guy has a netherite axe. I see totems down there. We've got ourselves some totems of destiny. Let's get one equipped right now. Let's repair this iron golem. There's some more totems here from the other revoker. And there's more modded totems dropped over here. The iron golems are putting in work right now. These are totems of lightning. There are a few enemies up on this hill. I think they're the final ones of the wave. Get your netherite axe away from me, son. There's another modded totem here. There we go. The final few raiders are outlined for us. There's also an evoker up here. We're going to jump up and one-tap him. Or not. We could just keep shooting him. There we go. There's just too many totems at this point. We've got a totem of speed. That could be useful. But let's get to higher ground because the next wave is starting and I do not want to be on the ground when that happens. We are facing an army. But this is what you carry a flamethrower for. Oh, no. Assassin, guys. Oh, I'm getting jumped. No, 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 no. Not what you want. Not what you want. You know the raid is insane when regular ravagers are easy. Gun him down. Burn them all. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm getting hit by. Whoever's doing that, stop. I'm nearly dead already. Great. Someone keeps spamming lightning and I don't know who it is. There you are. That must be you. Is it not? I can handle all you fine. It's just a random guy that keeps spamming lightning on my head. Look at the amount of loot here. It's you. You're the guy. I'm going to be honest, ladies and gentlemen. It is not looking too good for our armor right now. I have prepared myself for death. I'm going to be honest. This might be the sheriff's last stand. No, not this again. Go away. Oh, that's another totem. No, 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 no. Why there are full netherite armored zombies in this raid, I will never know. Please drop me your armor, please. Oh, those are wither skeletons. We need the flamethrower. Am I playing Doom? What's going on? So many Vex. Oh my God. Who keeps spawning these? And once again, we're almost dead. This is great. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Fun game. Please drop me your armor. If you don't drop armor, this is just over. How is this fair? Our helmet just broke. I need to find who's spawning these. I can't win. Oh, there's another totem. No. I'm going to be honest, guys. I don't know what to do. Why is that Ravager coming across the bridge? You stupid evoker. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's all, it's all gone. It's all gone dark. I have no idea what's going on. What is this? No. Am I in a wall? Oh, he spawned me in the floor. I can't even get outside because all the enemies are piling in here. Only I'm supposed to have a netherite sword. Not you as well. No. No, 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 no. Not again. Not again. Not again. Not again. Not again. Oh, okay. That was cool. Have some fire. It did nothing. And they're still coming straight for me. Great. The zombie with a spade. He's come back to haunt us. Oh, that's the boss guy dead. There's a wither guy through here. Die! Come on. No, you don't. I'm so low. There's another totem gone. Oh! The dawn of day 100 is upon us, ladies and gentlemen. And unfortunately, I have to admit I'm beat. Our helmet's broken. Our boots are broken. Our chest plate and leggings aren't far behind. I physically can't win this raid. We've got under a stack of ammo left for the weapon that's been completely carrying us. The Vidas SMG. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know if you'd like to see 200 days where I will get the strongest gear I possibly can and run it back with this raid. I'm really proud of what we've been able to accomplish in this 100 days and I know we can do so much more. Good luck mate, the village is in your hands now.